Okay. It happens to be March 29th, 2014. That's right. Saturday afternoon, March 29th, 2014. The end of the month. And uh, it's raining all day today <coughs> here in uh, northeastern New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, greetings, everyone. I haven't seen you people in a long time. Right. We haven't done a show in two weeks uh, because of uh, things that happen, you know, illness. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, we're here. Better late than never after a two week uh, absence. Nice. And um, uh, we're, we're glad to see you. Uh, this is, uh, um, well, the new name of our show is uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth formerly known as uh, Progressive Discussions. I found that the word progressive was bringing in too many ultra left-wing people who did not believe in rolling up their sleeves and fighting. They were desperately afraid of offending someone. And uh, they were just sycophants and, and, and kiss-ups, and, and not corporate kiss-ups, but they were just afraid to duke it out. And I, I really don't like um, people without a spine. You know, if you're gonna have a, if you're gonna be a progressive liberal, at least have a spine. So I was getting too many of them scolding me for being too rough on the uh, right-wing trolls and teabaggers over there on the Facebook group. So I decided to get rid of the labels, remove the word progressive, and just stick to the real proven hard-hitting truth, which is really what life is all about. Unless you're, unless you're some greedy, corrupt, conservative, lunatic, religious nut, you know. But um, we're here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and um, I will now formally pipe aboard my co-host and mentor for Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth with my authentic bosun's whistle. You might be able to hear the rain outside. Mm -hmm. It's quite heavy. The, the precipitation is quite heavy. Raindrops are falling on my head. Oh, that was a depressing song. I don't like any... any used to sing those songs, you know, and drugged up. Very depressing songs, like Karen Carpenter and all that. You know, I mean, unbelievable voice, but... depressing. Hold on. Arr, welcome aboard our uh, the starship censored, the starship of hard hitting, the starship of hard hitting truth censored. The one and only, the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman. How are you doing this week, sir? Uh, better, better, better. The Ides of March. I still the got a six feeling in my stomach all the time. You know? Sick feeling in your stomach. I, I get that way every time I read bad news from Capitol Hill concerning uh, Republican congressmen. <laughs> I always get a sick feeling in my stomach. Uh, I hear that a um, couple Supreme Court judges, I think one of them <coughs> might be, uh, Excuse me. I don't know if you, yeah, my, one of them might be Antony Scalia with that, big, with that big fat jowly face oh, with the double chin. They want, a, they, not only do they want personhood, to be uh, granted to corporations, but they want religious rights or religious status to be granted to corporations. How preposterous is that? Uh, pretty preposterous because it's not really religious uh, that they want. They want the companies to be able to say no to anything that uh, would benefit you, such as uh, pension, such as uh, Health care. Right. They want to be in charge. It's as simple as that. Tax exempt. It's nothing to do with religion. They want to be tax exempt, like like the like the, the all the 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 whore mega mega churches that should be paying taxes. Yeah, they don't want to pay for uh, any of these uh, what were fringe benefits. 
You know, a long time ago, back in the, in, in the 30s or whatever, in the New Deal and everything, the companies came up with, well, you know, we can't pay you wages, but we'll give you fringe benefits. Now they want to get out of that deal. We can't pay you wages. But they yeah, they never, didn't want to raise the wages. They didn't, they didn't feel so, like raising it. Right, yeah, it's not so that they, they can't. fringe benefits. Because you know? 10 10 an hour is not going to cut it with today's cost of living. Yeah, everybody knows that. Well, 10 10 an hour is going to take companies broke. How the hell can it take them broke when it's tax deductible? Wages are tax deductible. And what about uh, CE, and CEO salaries? Why, why um, does the little guy have to make sacrifices? They do that with the shares of the company. They blame so that they can avoid taxes and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, they they always blame it on the shareholders, CEOs. Well, you know, I have to keep the shareholders happy. Well, guess what? Whoa. Uh, investing in common stocks is speculative, and it's it, there is an inherent risk when you purchase common stocks. So you know what? If if you're if all your rich shareholders don't, the point. if they want a sure thing, then investing in stocks is not the way to do it. But what they do is, just like Wall Street, when they brought everything down, they, they, they bet on things. Let, let's say you and I wanted to make a bet. You yeah. wanted to bet something, you got to put up uh, 40 bucks. It's the whole margin is forty bucks. You so, gotta put it up. A third party. Right? They don't put it up. Yeah. And then they make the money from their bet and they pay off their little margin that they do put up there. This is what they do. Is that what they do to everybody's bank accounts? They just Well, those banks don't hold bank accounts. The commercial I mean the uh, investment banks. They're not banks for commercial uh, uh, checkings and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. That's why the Glass-Steagall Act was very important. It separated investment banks and commercial banks. But all of a sudden, with Mr. Mr. Uh, 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 corporatist uh, uh, Bill Clinton signs away the Glass-Steagall, and Wall Street goes nuts because they can they can use all this money for all this risk taking. Etc. 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 They made billions and billions and billions, but guess what? They weren't liquid. They didn't have any reserves. And then they had the the, the, the subprime mortgages all packaged up in derivatives and everything, and they were worthless. They were toxic. So they were all broke. They were all broke. The Fed had to come in. And give them trillions of dollars. What did Main Street get? Nothing. The inside of a bagel. That's correct. Nothing. Well, you people out there that are diehard uh, Democrats, that where it did not sink in yet that the Democratic Party today is composed of corporatists, just like Republicans, two sides of the same coin, and uh, you're you're not willing to accept it and. Uh, just like a lot of people, a lot of right-wing evangelical religious nuts are not willing to accept that they are going to experience the tribulation and possibly perish in it. So, you know, I mean, it goes on and on, but, you know, they want to, they want to involve, they want to uh, interject religion in politics when it suits their power-hungry and selfish, greedy agendas. And, of course, their religion is just one of many. Why is it so important? Their religion. Our First Amendment protects all religions. It does not specialize in one. No, but that's what they're doing with cases like Hobby Lobby and etc. That's what they're doing. They're asking the court to say that their religion is the top-notch and therefore, they, you know, should get away with what they want to get away with. Well, who the hell is their religion? It's crap! Why, because they claim it's top notch? Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. I can say anything. I, I, exactly. I, mean, I mean, a person can say anything they want. It's like testimonial evidence. You look at a, an infomercial and you have testimonial 
evidence. Jo Joe Blow from Idaho took the product and, 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 it, and it, 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 it did wonders for, for him. It was miraculous. Yep. How do we know Joe Blow exists from Idaho? How do we know he took it? How do we know anything if there's no double blind placebo studies? We so, you, you know, you're taking somebody's word for it that, oh, we're right, you're wrong. We're elitists, you're beneath us. You're not qualified to to vote, to cast your vote, because you're a common folk, you know, and you're not smart enough to vote. So, you know, it, it's all hearsay. It's all, you know, yes, he said... But besides that, religion has no place in our secular laws. That's true. None whatsoever. And religion should be taxed just like everybody else. Absolutely. And you know another strange thing that the right wing has never caught on to. Religions get donations. Socialism! Socialism! Well, well what about the rich getting uh, trillions in, in, wel in corporate welfare? Well, that's another example, mm -hmm. but I'm saying taxpayers socialism. money. Socialism! Like Chris Christie using tax dollars to pay off his lawyers for Bridgegate. <laughs> and the commercials, the commercial. Supposedly, uh, uh, Sandy money was used for that commercial. Stronger than a stone. Really? That's to make Christie look good. Yeah. What about helping the people who <laughs> lost their homes from Hurricane uh, Sandy? It's over a year now, and uh, they're still waiting. So this was money for Chris Christie to play with. I'm, I'm sure. I gave give to his cronies. I'm sure. Yeah. Contractors. Crony capitalism. Crony contractors. Like that 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 cute banner I put up last night. I don't know if you saw it, but you if you if not you will. Ooh. About crony capitalism, and uh, I'm sure President Obama knows what Christie did with the the funding, and it, it, that would that would stop me from giving any more money. To New Jersey, if knowing that the Republican governor well, the did not already been allocated towards the right purpose, but uh, before we begin, because begin. I begin, well, we started early because I wanted to make up for lost time from last week, not having a show. Um, you know, Doctor <coughs> Bill, I was thinking. Last that was night, dangerous. <laughs> I was thinking last night. Uh, Hypothetically, but not not so hypothetically, because somebody I hear did win. Ooh. It was either the Powerball or, or the Mega Millions lottery. Mega, two people won. Twenty million. Twenty million? No, no. It was no. more it than was that. Four hundred million. Wow. And two people won. All right. Well, let's just say a fictitious person. We'll call him Joe Blow from Idaho, since it has a nice, funny ring to it. Did he grow potatoes? I hope so. Russ. Remember what Jerry Seinfeld says, if I'm in Idaho, I want to eat a damn potato. If I'm in, in Maine, I want a lobster. You know, I don't know, I don't know if the potato tastes any better in Idaho than here, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> Joe Blow from Idaho, let's say he wins the Powerball lottery by himself. He wins $20 million, let's just say. Okay. Poor guy, he's a poor schmuck, you know. Uh, he wins, and uh, Joe Blow from Idaho has to pay about a third mm, of, of that winnings in, in taxes. Is that correct? So give, give or take. Yeah, yeah. But if a, an already wealthy person makes $20 million in profit any given month, they don't pay any taxes on it. Chances are they will have all the loopholes and they will get away with paying... Capital gains. Right. 15%. Right. So a poor guy that wins twenty million, well, he's not so poor anymore. He's he's wealthy now. He's he's worth twenty million. Yeah, but he's lost a third. But they automatically take a third from him. It's like inheritance tax. It's just a a ripple, a ripple. It's all of unfair. these things, all of these things from the government have been, as far as the taxes and loopholes and etc., are to protect those with the money. It's fixed. The yeah. system is fixed. It's rigged. That's the rigged. word. It's rigged. <coughs> For those on the top. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's rigged. And these morons that continue to watch Fox News, 
all these people, I know, I know I say, I keep on talking about it, but it infuriates me. These adult human beings, humanoids, whatever you want to call them, from the red states of America, the Bible Belt states, the western states, the southern states, that are, are uh, follow this religious cult, this, uh, this phony, baloney, evangelical, counterfeit Christian cult, who believe the lies every day coming out of Fox and, uh, News who believe all this conservative propaganda, that everything is Obama's fault, even the troops not receiving supplies like they should have, they blame Obama, forgetting about Cheney and Bush, and it, it goes on and on and on. They, well, they, the big they, Obama's they responsible for the damn deficit when it was G.W. Bush who created it, who ruined the surplus from Bill Clinton. And these but idiots keep on believing the lies. Be fixed as long as we cut programs for the needy. That'll fix everything. What about cutting all subsidies to the rich? Oh, no, no, no. We did. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, I lean forward and my T lean forward also. All right, go ahead. Uh, what was I saying? We were talking about cutting, uh, you know, oh, they yeah, want to... everything they, will be fixed with the budget. They want to take the crumbs uh, out of the mouth. Of the po of the know, po folk, but they those things right. for the needy. Ask Paul Ryan. Right. He'll tell you. But just trillion. It's okay for trillions to go towards a bloated military budget. It's okay for trillions to go uh, uh, in the hands of their crony uh, elitist uh, buddies, bed buddies. You know, the rich getting the corporate welfare. That's fine. But but to help a poor slob with some food stamps, especially a veteran, cutting a veteran and his family's food stamps. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that has to be done, according yes, to the it, Republic. It has to be done because that's the way we will solve these problems. Well, that's Paul Ryan, he'll tell but, you. But don't doesn't it click inside their heads out out in the red states that this is corruption at its worst? No, because they had that attitude that we were talking about before. Uh, remember when I said that these these people on Facebook, you you constantly see it. I don't want somebody else. They're taking my taxes on welfare. Lazy bum. Whatever do. The rich have, since the forties, uh, you know, after the New Deal, they've had a great propaganda campaign to make the the, the poor fight amongst themselves for crumbs. For crumbs. For crumbs. Crumbs, literally. And protect them. Even protect billionaires. Even whatever jobs are left are still part of the crumbs. Yeah. Because even if it's ten, the minimum wage goes to ten ten an hour, it's still crumbs compared to the cost of the living. Mm. You know, it's crumbs. It's and all crumbs. Everything went up this year again, didn't it? Because of drought, because of uh, this, that, and the other thing. Food. Oil. And never. guess what is not? Uh, uh, guess what's not part of the CPI to uh, give uh, Social Security recipients a raise every year and everything? Oil and food. Oh, really? They don't count them. So you freeze to death in the winter. Too volatile. And you starve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it yeah. saves the government money. I mean, it, it almost seemed like that's the first thing they wanted to cut was food stamps. Yeah. Food stamps is a drop in a bucket for poor families. I mean, compared to the, the trillions wasted in the military and corporate welfare, and food stamps are nothing. Lost. Uh, excuse me. Lost. Excuse me? Trillions have been lost. They are oh, really? unaccounted for. Oh, really? You can't find them in an audit. They say they can't find them in an They're audit. They're gone. They say they can't find them in an audit. Well, I know where they went, but you know. It's like Chris Christie's saying, oops. Oh yeah, we can't find the Sandy money. Oops! <laughs> they know where it all went. Well, that's the point, though. There's, it, it's all it's all gone, lost, etc. And it's it it's not taken in by these idiots yeah. as part of the budget problem. Well, well, Cr Christie the seems is always a needy. Chris Christie seems uh, like um, he has become like a Teflon governor with Bridgegate. It seems. Uh, any articles uh, on Bridgegate? They have been uh, large, let me say, and say nothing, because this last, this, this last lawyers were 
were Christie's. They were Christie's lawyers. What are they going to say about them? Something bad? What about the federal prosecutors? Are they doing their well, job? Well, that, that thing is still outstanding. Okay. That's independent. Okay. That will say something. And Bridget Kelly, of course, right. she, she said that it was a whitewash. Well, and why did he pick on my personal life shit? Well, Christie you know? was a federal prosecutor, so he's no, he's no idiot when it comes to being slippery like an eel and slithering out of trouble, you know. Yes, but prosecutors around the country have prosecuted the wrong people. Interesting. Okay. Oh, um, people on death row, etc., that were innocent. DNA showed that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I want to, before we start, I want to just say uh, I want to salute Jesse Ventura on his new show, uh, Off the Grid on Aura TV, uh, streamed online only, uh, uncensored, of course, and a uh, great job. Um, Jesse Ventura, you're off to a very strong start, and I, I heard him speaking to Gary No uh, uh -huh. lately. He was on the Gary No show, but only by... Um, only by audio because every time I try to go to Ustream to watch the Gary No show on video, there's no audio. Uh, the audio is muted. By the way, Gary No has a new page that supposedly has all the stuff, the videos, and everything archived. Blog dot Gary no dot com, I think, or dot org. Okay. Blog dot <coughs> Gary no dot com or dot org. So he has um, videos and everything is supposed to be up there, easy to find. Yeah, well, it was uh, like that originally. From originally, from but PR. then they changed it for the PRN the dot FM, and he can't find crap. No, what happened was um, at one time the Progressive Radio Network, uh, uh, the Gary Noll archive page, mm -hmm. had in front of you your choice of either listening, you know, streaming or downloading the audio version right. and then it had if there was a video version it was there yes it was right there right under the topic mm -hmm. somebody one of Gary's people decided to take the, remove that I have no idea why because well, they revamped the page it's so when much these people do it is revamping a page is it's crap they want to see that they're Not working they want to see that they're working so they protect their jobs you know, not, uh, changing things is not always necessary. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. If you, there's nothing more convenient than having one web page in front of your eyeballs. And with, knowing with, the, how to navigate. And, and knowing and making it easy to navigate okay. and having the option of clicking download or listening to the stream, the web stream, or watching the video which is right in front of you right under the topic it's common sense you don't have to be a computer programmer to understand this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keep it simple exactly. stupid stupid yeah. keep it simple like like Jesse Ventura's uh, uh, Aura TV page is very simple and very uh, user friendly that's the whole thing you, user friendly you go there you got his latest shows, you got his older archive shows, which are not that archived. And then you want to listen to it, you click on the on the on the play button and you listen to it. Yeah. Nothing confusing about um, off the grid. But anyway, salute to uh, Jesse Ventura and, and he he should have Gary Noll as, as a guest on Aura TV. I'm sure he will because he gave Gary some great compliments. Uh -huh. Said that he should work for the. Uh, uh, I think he said he should that Gary should work for the Jesse Ventura team as like a prosecutor or investigator or something, because he's he 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 uh, <laughs> he's very impressed. Jesse's very impressed by Gary Noll, which he should be. Well, last night uh, a bunch of uh, Gary's uh, followers, etc. Hey, Gary, you should run for office. Gary, you should. Gary answered them. I don't want to get shot. He said. Well, not only that. Running for office will do nothing. Look, the whole well, system needs to be totally revamped. Even if, even if Gary ran as an independent, how how are people going to know him 
like 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 they knew H. Ross Perot, who was at in who was at the debates. They don't the independents do not do the independents do not get invited to any debates. But I'm talking beyond that. You see what happened to Mr. Franken. Oh, that when he became part Jabroni. of the problem. He dummied up. Okay. He dummied up like Archie Bunker used okay. to say. You never heard of from, from Al Franken again. That's the point. Frankenberry. So you, so you can't do and make changes and improvements and et cetera from within the system. He had a lot to say when he was yeah. on Air America. Al Franken had a lot to say when he wrote all his books. He was not shy about expressing his his uh, uh, opinion and his uh, uh, his facts. His facts and his dissent for, for conservatives, yeah. you know, but as soon as he became governor, I'm sorry. Governor? As soon as he became um, senator. senator of the state of Minnesota, Senator Al Franken, dummy it up. You yeah, never you heard hear from, from him. from him anymore. Frankenberry, which is not to be confused with Count Chocula. Let us... Levity bells, they're long overdue. Yeah, yeah. Let us sink our teeth now into these readings. You dig where I'm coming from? If I had a shovel, I would dig it. I'm trying to talk like little Wolfman Jack. I can really dig that sound, brother. Well, you gotta get a little more rasp in your voice. I can dig. Well, I don't have any problems with mm -hmm. rasp with this weather we're having. You know, not to be confused with rasp berry. Why do they call it a raspberry? Does it make you raspy? I don't know. I, I thought you were an intellectual. Know. Me? I ain't never tried to love. <coughs> the World Health Organization oh, wonderful. declared the Southeast Asia polio free on Thursday. Marking a global health milestone for India, where the disease accounted for nearly half of all worldwide cases just five years ago. The announcement came after an independent commission of public health experts determined that the 11 nation region, as defined by the World Health Organization, has not had a confirmed polio case for the last three years. India's official polio free status came after a massive billion dollar campaign, largely government funded, that alerted the public to the importance of vaccination and enlisted nearly 2.4 million volunteers to immunize 170 million children. It has had no confirmed polio case since January 2011. The 10 other nations in the region are Bangladesh, Bhutan, South Korea, Bhutana. Indonesia, Maldives, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Timor List. Whatever that is. Myanmar used to be Burma, right? Yes. Almost sounds like Malamar. <laughs> That's not too cool. Mm. I know that colds are caused by a virus. No kidding. But every winter I hear people say they caught a cold because of dramatic changes in the temperature. That's very possible. Yeah, all, all, uh, rapid alterations in the temperature. Or from going in and out of warm buildings when it's cold outside. Yeah. This idea is so pervasive that I wonder if there may be a grain of truth in it. Is there? No. There's not. If temperature changes caused colds or made us more susceptible to cold viruses, we'd be getting colds all summer too. 
Changes in the weather are frequent then, and we routinely go in and out of air-conditioned homes and shops. Restaurants and theaters often seem frigid. Drier indoor air in the winter may play a role in vulnerability. But no. people get colds only <coughs> from other people. Really? Not from the weather. The rhinovirus. Yeah, but um, um, your immune system would, I would assume, be under stress if you're constantly going from a freezing cold environment into a cold. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that cause stress and strain on your immune system? To make you more Possibly, but then where would you get the virus uh, to uh, give you the cold? In other words, what they're saying is a virus, like a parasite, has to be transmitted to you to you from another location. Yeah, has to jump so on no you. No hugging, no shaking hands, no kissing, no no uh, fucking, no nothing in the winter. No, no Do not touch another person. No, no cunny, no cunny linguistics. Nothing, 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 nothing. No Philip Lacio. Nothing in the winter. In the winter? <laughs> Sky rockets in flight. <laughs> Afternoon delight. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if you have a significant a significant other, other, put her on hold. What if she what if you know she's uh, uh she's monogamous? You're you're a monogamous couple. And and you know she's she clean. Could still have and a she virus. knows you're clean, huh? She could have a virus. Well, do you wrap cellophane around her mouth? Don't touch her. Do not even breathe her air. So what are you becoming like this uh celibate? Are you becoming like this cel celibate celibate, celibate Saint William Eisenman? Celibate in the winter. <laughs> in the summer you can frolic all you want. Yeah, but then the weather is hot and sticky. And that's no time for You Dunk got air conditioning. That's no time for Duncan Dicky. Oh, air conditioning. Yeah. Democrats investigating the George Washington Bridge controversy panned Thursday's report released by a lawyer hired by the Christie administration. It fails to settle the major questions surrounding the September line, lane closures at the bridge. And it does not contain information from all the key people involved. The big question of motive has not been answered. As a matter of fact, more questions have been raised, said State Senator Loretta <coughs> Weinberg, a Democrat of Teaneck, one of the two leaders of the joint legislative committee investigating the lane closures. Assemblyman John Wisniewski, Democrat of Middlesex, the other leader, said the report is incomplete because several important figures were not interviewed. <clears throat> Several are asserting their Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. And others decline to speak to the lawyer hired by Christie. It seems like a rush to judgment, to come to a conclusion, to provide the governor with a talking point so he can attempt to put his controversy behind him. Yeah, which he's, he's trying very hard to do. Well, right now, I believe he's over in Nevada, sycophanting the ass of Mr. Sheldon Adelstein for Mula really? for his campaign, along with a bunch of other Republicans like Jeb Bush. That's all we need is another Bush in the White House. Well, Jebby was uh, played a role in the. Uh the re-election of his brother, I think, in Florida. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, with those cockamamie uh, uh, voting uh, electronic and, and... Voting machines. Voting machines and 
and you know the um, the absentee ballots were never like totally accounted for. Overseas ballots and uh, the report released on Thursday by Randy Maestro from the law firm of Gibson Dunn did not indicate a reason for the September lane closures at the George Washington Bridge, but said no evidence had been found that the closures were intended as retribution against the Democratic mayor of Fort Lee for declining to endorse Christie's re-election campaign. Maestro's, might even be Maestro, but Ran Randy, Ma Maestro. Randy Maestro. Randy Maestro and the Brooklyn Bridge? That's Maestro. Oh, okay. The report concluded, though, that Christie was not involved in the decision to close the lanes. Weinberg said she would not take a position on Christie's involvement until her committee's investigation is complete. But she said she was not surprised the report absolved the governor. Christie's administration paid Maestro's law firm one million dollars to create the report. Mr. Maestro did what he was paid to do, Weinberg said. Assemblyman Michael Patrick Carroll, a Republican, on the committee said he doubted the opponents of Christie's could be convinced that the Republican governor wasn't involved in the lane closures. If you're out there trying to prove a negative, that's an impossibility, said Carol. I will never, ever, 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 ever be able to prove that I didn't do something. They're never going to be able to accept the fact that there's no evidence the governor was involved. Democrats also took issue with some of the documents cited by the report, which Weinberg said were provided to Maestro before they were submitted in response to her committee's subpoenas. Between 4,000 and 5,000 pages of additional documents were turned over to the legislature on Thursday, Weinberg said. Wisniewski said he thought the report also contained irrelevant facts such as a reference to a personal relationship between two of the central figures in the scandal. Former Christie Deputy Chief of Staff Bridget Ann Kelly and Christie Campaign Manager Bill Stepien. Overall, Wisniewski said, he reads more like a novel than a work of fact. <clears throat> Maybe he's just, they just purposely have a blind eye to whether or not he's guilty. They just, maybe there is evidence there that they're not Well, they didn't go after any evidence. That's the point. They went after friends of Christie and interviewed friends of Christie, etc. They did not, uh, they did not interview, nor could they, the people involved. Right. Stepien, the uh, Wildstein, Bridget and Bridget Kelly, and uh, whatever her name is, and the other guy, Baroni. Baroni Maroni. Baroni Maroni. They didn't, uh, you know, uh, interview any of those. So what the hell were they going to come up with? Huh? What do you expect them to come up with? True. Very true. And in fact, keeping on the same theme, it is about time that a concerned citizen broke through Governor Christie's Iron Curtain and not so compliant participant at Christie's town hall meeting on March 20th. Those town hall meetings of Christie are funny. You you can't express your, your opinion if it if you contradict the governor, she, he, he yells at you and wants to throw you out. If you challenge him. He asked the governor if he fired Bridget Ann Kelly for ordering 
the lane closures or merely for lying to him. Mm -hmm. As Christie repeatedly emphasized during his marathon news conference in January, many questions remain unasked and unanswered, such as, what precisely did you say to Bridget Kelly? And what precisely did she say to you to lead you to conclude that she lied to you? Mm -hmm. Did she answer you directly or through another person? If so, who was this person? Were any notes or other records of the question and answer meeting taken? These and similar obvious questions have not been asked. Nor has Christie seen fit to provide answers without public prompting. Why? Since the governor has nothing to hide or protect, why wouldn't he voluntarily relate who said what to whom and when? Instead, all we have is Christie's January 9th explanation that he had asked his staff if they had anything to do with the George Washington Bridge laying closures and that they said no. For those of us cynically inclined, Christie's self-imposed vagueness looks like the product of a good lawyering at $650 per hour. Which the taxpayers of New Jersey paid for. One million bucks. That's unbelievable. Think of it this way. No matter what Kelly and company may eventually say, Christie's vagueness permits him the freedom to craft his future response without fear of any prior contradictory statements getting in the way. Governor Christie never lacks for a scapegoat, never misses an opportunity to deflect responsibility from himself and create internal discord. When his agenda is to weaken civil service protections from cronyism. New Jersey transit flood problems are caused by a mystery middle manager who is protected by the civil service merit system. When an advocacy, advocacy, advocacy group exercises its right to free speech and to seek a redress of grievances, there must have been a union at the bottom of it. And when the Motor Vehicle Commission, which is a part of his executive branch, amends one of its regulations and thereby prevents Tesla from legally selling directly to customers as it had been, it becomes the fault of the legislature somehow. Christie has been lauded for his leadership in the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy since that has also come under scrutiny. We've heard that there were no promises of its being error-free, and there was a learning curve, and that it has been like creating a second government. Really? The task was outsourced, which led to more mismanagement and wasted tens of millions of dollars. <coughs> Christie's performance as governor has been a testimony of mediocrity. The state's debt is as bad as when Christie took office. The pension liability is still grossly underfunded and the transportation fund is still funded by ever-increasing debt. Because the rich are not paying their taxes. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the New Jersey labor force has declined under the governor's watch. And there were 26,385 fewer New Jerseyans working as of January True. than when Christie took off. Very true. Leaders don't create scapegoats and don't make excuses. They answer the tough questions from those knowledgeable about the issues and answer them truthfully. It is well past time for new leadership.
think he got reelected based on. Yes, he did. Would you let me finish? I think he got reelected based on his obnoxious personality. No, because he's a lovely looking bear. Oh, you mean what my mother said one time? That's correct. He looks like a cuddly teddy bear? That's correct. That's right. Like he's got that Santa Claus look to him? Oh, he does look like Santa Claus, I'll look right at. Probably looks <laughs> like, in his bathing suit, he probably looks like the Michelin man. Oh, man. You know, people. No, he did lose some weight. Okay. Some weight? Some weight, yes. Maybe 35 pounds. Where, he got a lighter fork? Uh, uh, Looks like it, because his profile is no different. Looks like he put it back on to me. If he would have went on a proper ketogenic diet, he wouldn't have needed the stomach stable surgery. Gastric bypass. Laparotomy. Yeah. Whatever. Lapar laparotomy? Yeah. Okay. That's when she's on your lap and you're erotizing her. But not in the winter time. So in other words, what you're trying to say is you would choose to be celibate during the winter. You don't have to be celibate. You can take things in your own hand, you know? You ever hear of Mary Palmer? Yeah, Bur Bird, Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania. Bird in Hand. Shillelagh in hand. Ah, I don't think so. Hey, what about people that have fireplaces and wood-burning stoves and jacuzzis? I mean, so you're supposed to, like, forget all about those romantic settings? Hold on. You're supposed to forget all about those romantic settings because it's winter? you want to get a cold. Rhino virus? Whatever. Rhino, yeah. I know a friend of mine right now is uh, suffering what he calls a stomach virus, but 90% oh, yeah. of stomach viruses are food poisoning. Food poisoning? That's correct. Well, um, my sister told me everybody at her job is sick. There you go. My sister got sick. Well, for something uh, like that, you might want to activate a shark. Food poisoning. No. You know? All right, what's, uh, what do we, how the we doing on time? The Green Family. What family? The Green Family. Oh. That owns the Hobby Lobby craft store. Believes the federal government ran roughshod over their religious liberties when the Affordable Care Act required their company to cover the full range of birth control options in employee health plans. Now, I think, I think the subject of uh, birth control, contraception, things of that matter, are optional. I don't, I don't think it should be paid for by tax, with taxpayers' money. It's, it's, it's. it's Who the hell's talking about taxpayer money? No, I mean, I mean, uh, why Affordable should? Affordable Care Act that has taxpayer money? No, no, no. It's Affor a private thing. It's private insurance companies that are giving you insurance. The government is not paying for anything of that. That's the problem with Obamacare. Oh, okay. Yeah, not only that, I found out that uh, with Obamacare, including Medicaid, they won't pay for dental implants. They'll, they'll only pay for partials, for dentures. They won't pay for implants, which means somebody He's got to like take the friggin' thing in and out of their mouth, clean it, put it back, so on and so forth. Instead of just making it permanent and giving you the implants, nah, they won't pay for that. Same thing with optometry. You know, if somebody's got bad eyesight, they'll pay for those stupid, thick, you know, uh, 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 eyeglass lenses that look like hell, but they won't pay for decent lenses decent eyeglasses. It sucks. I'm not happy with the, you know, the HMO, look, it's good for people that had nothing, but provide adequate, full coverage for all in America. They didn't go that route. 
That's the problem. Because the Democrats didn't fight hard enough for that round. They weren't ever fighting for it. Ah. There was a thing on the table, I think it was by someone back in 2003 or something, or five, uh, universal health care. But they weren't going to go there. They can't go there. They are corporatists. They have to do the bidding of the corporations. So they made it a private market thingy. Okay? Now, so. here, that's another problem with this Hobby, Hobby Lobby religious crapola stuff. Why, who is Hobby Lobby? First of all, they're, they're paying for insurance from some private company that they're giving to their employees. Why the hell do they have any kind of concern about what the coverage is from that private company? Very intrusive of them. Exactly. None of their damn business. Exactly. If somebody uh, uh, wants to provide contraception, wants to provide market. contraception, and and it's part of the plan anyway. Yes, exactly. None of your damn business. Right wing fundamentalist evangelicals. None of your damn fucking business. What? anybody does in the privacy of their own homes and lives. None of your damn business. And Save your own soul. Well. So well, how, are they gonna how are they gonna monitor uh, 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 sexual behavior? It's like Christine it's O'Donnell. Sexual. It's like... It has nothing to do with sexual They just behavior. don't want... They don't want... They the won't want to pay for it. But it, 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 from what you told me, it's not going to make a difference with their premium, whether... It the country isn't, but it's a principle they're fighting for. Oh. The principle is they are a religious organization, and the company is a Baptist organization, oh, and they should have control over what they determine is their religious idea. Sounds like a cult to me. Sounds like exactly. Evangel sounds like evangelicals. Exactly. But they want this written in law that they can do these things. Keep the damn church out of politics. Bingo! As Christians, the Greens argued they could not comply. As Christians? Yes. In their view, Four of those birth control methods can cause abortion. Though many major medical voices disagree. It's still none of their business. Today, the Supreme Court will hear the case. Combining fundamental questions of religious rights, oh. corporate rights, Obamacare and abortion, the case is the most important the Supreme Court will decide this year. It will be bundled with a similar lawsuit filed by the Mennonite owners of a wood cabinetry corporation in Lancaster County, more Pennsylvania. More fundamentalists. Mind your own Amish. business. Well, no, Mennonite. Mennonites are similar, similar to Amish, but they're not they're not Amish, but they're, they're, they, they dress similar. They're Germans, right? German Americans. And they're not biblical. And they're not as um, strict biblically. Well, biblically. They're not biblical biblically. at all. None of them are really biblical. That's correct. That's why I say they're part of a cult. That's correct. They are all cults. It's still none of their damn business what other people do with their lives. Well, if they're paying for it. They if. want control of it. Yeah. See? That's the problem. <coughs> the government is forcing us to choose between following our faith and following the law. Wrote David Green, the CEO and founder of Oklahoma City based Hobby Lobby. I say that's a choice no American. And no American business should have to make. Supporters of the so-called contraception mandate fear that a victory for the plaintiffs could prompt businesses to flout any number of laws 
by claiming a violation of religious freedom. They ask, what about a woman's right to be covered for the full array of birth control options available through the Affordable Care Act? Is it really the company's right to decide that the only drugs and medical procedures they will cover are the ones that conform to their owner's personal belief? Administrative supporters also argue that Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood claim religious rights the Constitution bestows on individuals, not corporations. Conestoga Wood? That's the other group. Uh -huh. It's easy to be sympathetic to the devout individual business owners behind the corporations in these cases. But their rights are not implicated by the Affordable Care Act's contraceptive provisions. That's how the Greens and their supporters see it. To them, you can't separate the family from the corporation. Because the family runs the corporation according to its deeply held Christian values. Deeply held Christian values? Now listen to this. Now listen to this carefully. One of their Christian values is closing more than 600 stores on Sunday. Is this biblical? Nine! That's German for no. Nine nine. No, it's, this it's not was put into effect by the Roman Catholic Church. It's the wrong it's Sunday. A, it's the wrong as the Sabbath. It's the wrong Sabbath. That's correct. Sabbath is the end of the week, not the first day. So are they biblical? No. No, they're not biblical. Uh -huh. no, they're but not. they want us to make laws in their favor as if they were biblical and a true Christian. Well, if they were Don't a true they? Christian, they would, they would only speak of things that were actually in the Bible. Well, they would be obeying and doing what Jesus did and said, if they were real Christians. And also... And that certainly would not be cutting food stamps for the needy and uh, withholding the uh, the many uh, pagan traditions of man instead of celebrating the authentic Christian hol holidays yes. like like they were supposed to yes. uh, speaking of pagan traditions of man when does uh, pagan Ishtar the worship of Ishtar take place what date I don't know is it in uh, April Oh, it's in April. But it's not, it's not this coming week. Ne it's not next Sunday, in other words. Well, what, Palm Sunday will be before it, right? Palm, yeah, Palm Sunday so is I before I didn't hear nothing it. about no Palm Sunday, so I don't think it's next week. Okay, so th this will not be the uh, pagan Ishtar show. The official happy pagan Ishtar show. No. Okay, all right, so it'll just be a show. For the Supreme Court to agree with the Greens, two questions must be answered. Does Hobby Lobby, the corporation, have religious rights protected by the First Amendment? If the corporation does have religious rights, have those rights been violated under a 20-year-old statute that sets a high bar for government interference? when it comes to protecting religious freedom. Jeff Matier, senior counsel at the Conservative Liberty Institute said, the question of a corporation's religious rights is not a tough one. If the court determines that they do not have that right, it's really going to change 200 years of legal precedent. 
where we have assumed, assumed, assumed. that corporations do have First Amendment rights, he said. He pointed to the Supreme Court's 2010 decision in the Citizens United campaign finance case in which the justices overturned bans on corporate political spending as a violation of freedom of speech. But there's a, se there's a strong argument for denying Hobby Lobby by religious rights. Though churches and other religious organizations enjoy the First Amendment's protection of free exercise of religion, these explicitly religious corporations are and always have been distinct from secular companies. Even if there are question they are if there are questionably devout religious people who work for and own secular businesses. If the court decides that Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood do have religious rights, the government would have to show a compelling interest for interfering with them. The test could be a hard one for the Obama administration to pass. Legal scholars on both sides agree, since it has already given out exemption after exemption to those who say they would have problems complying with one portion or another of the Affordable Care Act, such as churches and the homeless. Nevertheless, medical and public health experts see in ensuring women's health through access to contraception. Birth control has a profound health benefits, not only for the women, who use it to prevent and space out pregnancies, but for the children whose mothers have access to it. The medical community is clear, she said. This was uh, Dr. Nancy Stanwood. Contraception is a fundamental preventive health care for women. If the Supreme Court allows a company, owner's personal belief, to limit access to birth control, what other things will it get carved out? Oh yeah, it's just the beginning. We could go back to not serving black. The tip of the iceberg, this is, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Little by little, they'll, 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 they'll take a hand, they'll take fingers, they'll take the hand, they'll take the, uh, the arm, and then, you know, it just goes on and on. They'll see what they can get away with next, like they have been. Exactly, incrementally. Little by little. Step by step. Step by step. Abbott and Costello. Inch, inch by, by inch. inch. If the Supreme Court allows a company's owner's personal belief to limit access to birth control, what other things will get carved out? If someone is a Jehovah's Witness and they object to blood transfusion, <coughs> then their employees don't get transfusions. I think Jehovah's Witnesses believe that uh, Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are three separate entities, I think. The Trinity? Yeah, they don't believe they're... they're Actually, they believe... Well, it's, yeah, I believe they believe, they believe in a Trinity, but they believe that uh, uh, Jesus is the is uh, was created by God uh, as but it was begotten yeah no he wasn't begotten he was created created yeah yeah they he don't was begotten in Mary they don't recognize the uh, Elohim no. the, the combination right is Elohim no they don't understand that as being two gods in that sense there right? is they believe that that Satan is Jesus' brother. Huh? Yeah, he's huh? a brother. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like, right, so you ready for your break?
Uh, yeah, it's got? five minutes. Five minutes. All right, off. round it off. It's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, and then uh, we will be followed uh, by uh, <coughs> my meeting with William H. Morrow III, our voiceover artist, um, and uh, also a visit with the uh, aspiring actor, Mr. Sal Cotri, and then we will return with promo, you know, our commercial, followed by the show, returning to the second half of the show. Okay. Great. Sorry, I'm not my usual loquacious chatterbox self because my throat hurts. Uh huh. All right, hold on. Hope you haven't been eroticizing with anybody closeness or stuff. Not at all. Not, no, I got it. I think I got it from my sister who gave it to her fiance. But my sister had low grade fevers. I didn't. Maybe because of all the wonderful supplementation I take. You know, a lot of C, man, a lot of C. A lot of C, some zinc, uh, echinacea when you yeah. first came on. Well, you know, uh, um, and, uh, um, Gary Noah was very correct. When the body's under stress, it it uses up a great deal of water-soluble vitamins. Bs. B yes, complex uh, and C, yeah, sure. Your PP will turn white. Yeah, oh, when you're under a lot of stress. Yes. Yeah, all right, let me, let me break from this and uh, I'll go... Mosey on over to William H. Moore the third. Okay, uh, William H. Morrow, um, as, as you well know, and we had this discussion uh, many times about the Ross report and involving. Um, New talent, uh, fresh new talent trying to break into the business and of entertainment. And you know, roadblocks every which way you go. Yeah, you have a, don't, don't call, don't show up in person, don't send your photos. You have, bottom line is what you're saying is there's, it's almost impossible on your own to submit your talent, DVD, CD, what have you, or your yes. script, even Hollywood. Don't send spec scripts, things like this. You might have the next Rocky, I mean, you can, how many, I will, nobody will ever know, but I wonder how many things in history have been passed up. Well, let's be honest, when you were able to submit your greatest recording groups in history and your greatest actors have all been rejected, your greatest screenplays. So what's that mean? Yeah. Bottom line, nobody knows nothing, to be blunt. Yeah. Uh, they so how do you rely you on scouts? You, you, you have to wait for the I don't know. I don't know. What, I, I think it's friends at cocktail parties maybe saying, hey, I want you to look at the script. We're in front of my blah, 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 blah. Who knows what they are, are passing up or missing out on. That's they true. had one agent, I forget who it was years ago, and they, on the interview on TV, do you have any, any objections? To something you passed up on. And he said, yes, I do. And they said, what was it? He said, the Beatles. Really? He rejected them. Rolling Stones too, right? They were rejected. Yeah. So if you well, can't... I, I challenge you and anybody else to find me a group that has never been rejected. Yeah, that's true. It just shows the industry. That's all they do. Everybody, everybody new and unknown has been shot down. And, yeah. But, every, the, but, every, but the, hire these high-paid executives. They're afraid to yeah. take a chance. Why? If they don't pan out, you're out of a job because you took a chance and it failed. But you're hired to hopefully you should know talent. Why were you hired if you don't How get long shot? does it take to listen to someone for and five minutes? This sounds good. I like this. How long does it take? One minute. You could tell. One minute. If you have a good uh, uh, ear and eye for talent, in one minute you could if tell. If I owned an agency, my people would be taught you turn nothing down. You listen. You read everything that's submitted to us. And I want every, I would take ads out. Submit. We we are an open-minded talent agency. Yes. Submit everything to us. So in this case, you are totally dependent on accidentally running into one of their somebody agents. Who knows, somebody that can recommend you. You get lucky enough to meet somebody. How much real talent and great talent is possibly out there? You just can't get their foot in the door. I hate playing office politics with anything. You know that. I mean, I, I mean, it should be f fair to the point where if somebody is told that they're a great talent. Now, granted, well, a lot interrupt. of people are not. Let me show you how like stupid. American Idol. Let me show you how stupid corporate is. Way back in the '60s, a guy, some bigwig, saw a, 
something on the news or something about the Beatles. He goes, I like those boys. Sign them up for a TV show. Right. He says, said, boss, they're wealthier than we are. That's how he had the casting call and created the monkeys. He knew nothing about the Beatles. Here's a guy, all this money, didn't know anything about the industry. He didn't know who the Beatles or how big they were. Unbelievable. His, his assistant is in there, they have more money than we do. So he said, okay, we'll create a group. So they had a talent casting call, cattle call, whatever you want to call it, and the monkeys were created. There how about that? There you go. A fluke, a total accident, you know. By a guy with all this money that knows nothing. Knows nothing. Or they, knew nothing. I they didn't even know about a legendary group. Well, they weren't legendary because it was in that time period. Right, right, still, right, right. They were only like three or four years in the country. But, yeah. uh, but this was this was a post Ed Sullivan <laughs> debut? Shortly. Shortly, shortly after. Shortly after? Yeah. Okay. Very shortly after. So I'm I'm sure, talking, I'm you're sure talking mid-60s. Yeah, I'm sure the Beatles, a post Ed Sullivan debut, they were extremely popular. I'm sure they were. Jimmy, they were extremely popular when they arrived in the U.S. That's yeah. why the airports were packed. The Beatles invasion. The Beatles are coming. Everybody wants to know. And then later, That's the British why invasion. Sullivan brought them over. And then later on, the British invasion. Uh, everybody. everybody came. Oh, the groups are in. Now, are. it's it, it, it'll, the, the fair way to do it was is for talent agencies that make their money off of talent. Well, you don't get paid unless you make money. Right. Contingency. So, 10 ten percent. Yeah, you get ten percent on average. You can't approach these people. You can't show up. You can't do anything. And uh, uh, it, it's very illogical. But you know what's positive um, for, for unknown talent nowadays, young talent? is something called um, open mics. To, they, it gives them experience to perform. No, that's, in, that's locally, though. Your biggest thing is like Justin Bieber. He, he promoted himself on YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. You know, that's big. Open mics are local. I mean, you might get discovered. It doesn't hurt, but it's a smaller. Yeah, but it's not just singing. And it's not just singers and musicians. It's stand-up comics. Uh, and but then you have the reality shows to American Idol. America's Got Talent and The Voice. You know, yes, those two. That's true. Uh, and it's amazing how the biggest stars, is, I, yeah. if I'm correct, the biggest stars, recording stars that come out of that sh those shows, have never been the winner. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Well, but the good they are wonderful talent. The good thing Jennifer about Hudson, for example. I mean, yeah. My exactly. God, exactly. I mean, I mean, granted, there's there's a, there's multitudes of people on American Idol that all sound the same. Well, this also be honest. It comes down to taste too. Yeah. Jimmy, you like so and so. I don't. I like so and so. You don't. Like like every woman. Does everybody every, like, like the Beatles? Like, like no. Like every every female that sings tries to sing like Mariah Carey. It's the same style. You know what I mean? But once in a while, you get a diamond in the rough. You just don't know who it is. But you have to... Well, what's a diamond in the rough, Jimmy? Does everybody have to sound operatic? What about a hardcore voice like Janis Joplin? That was her style. That was her trademark. That raspiness. The didn't, Rod didn't, Stewart. Rod didn't. Stewart was a male Janis Joplin. What about, since, what about Melissa there. Etheridge? Well, she sounds like she a... She's excellent. She's, excellent. But excellent. She, but she sounds like a Janis Joplin, too. No. She had a raspy voice. No, she was smoother, softer around the edges. She's very excellent. Excellent. Excellent singer. You like Alanis Morissette? Very, very much. She's, she's uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Crow and Alanis Morissette. They're Canadian. Remind me so much of each other. They're Canadian. They really they're, they're from, uh, I, think I think, Montreal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Nothing like a Carole King. And one of the greatest ever to compose like a Carole King. Played at my high school, in fact. Sadly, she passed away years ago. Great composer, a la Carole King, was Laura Nero. A I remember that. I remember her. Played at my Ridgewood High School. I'm, pr I'm proud of that. Laura wow. Nero, Carol King, two of the greatest singers and composers. You get a, a chance to get a Laura Nero album, you'll have tears. Same with Carol King's songs. They are beyond gifted. Uh, it's just wonderful. It's uh, uh, Carly Simon. I mean, these are phenomenal performers and writers and yeah. writers in their own right. Yeah, well, uh, versatility. I, uh, Phil uh, Collins has uh, great uh, versatility. Phil Collins. I, I, I didn't care much. I, I'm sorry to say, I didn't care much for Genesis until Phil Collins became the lead man. Uh, you familiar with Yes? Oh, big time. Uh, they call it progressive rock, right? Well, I don't know what it's called, but they're. Excellent band, excellent band. I've, uh, I've listened to them since the late 60s, early 70s. Good, great guitarists, right? Everything. Their, their vocals. Oh, for God's sake. All right. Winkler, I think it's Charles. Charles. Winkler Chartoff. It was Erwin Winkler something Chartoff. And uh, they believed in him and what he had. Do you know the original Rocky was made for under a million dollars? 
Not really? You know, during the big that low fight. budget? Yeah, under a million. I know. You know the original fight when Apollo Creed came out in the float when James Brown started singing. They only shot and you saw. But they only. had no James Brown in the Rocky one. That was in Rocky Four. Was it? Okay, well, whatever. Well, when the float came out with Apollo Creed all dressed as Uncle Sam. Yes, and I they remember only that. shot one side of the float. Do you know why they only shot one side? Why? Every dollar of that budget mattered. They only had to paint one side. So they only shot one side to save money for paint. Every little penny adds up. Right, because of very low budget. Every, under a million dollars. The first Planet of the Apes was shot for under a million dollars. Look what that made. Now, do you, now, what do you think? If you want to go some real quick trivia here. It's probably, I'm not positive, but my guess is the most profitable movie, profitable is your key phrase here, movie of all time. Take a guess, just for the hell of it. Then you take a guess too, James. Most profitable movie of all time? Profitable movie of all time. Not expensive to make, blah, blah, blah. Profitable of all time. Cleopatra there with Elizabeth Taylor? Probably Deep Throat. What? It cost $25,000 to make. It so far has done well over $1 billion. Is that Linda Lovelace? Yeah. Think about that. 25 grand to make over a billion dollars so far. That's almost pure profit. Think about that. Wow. Am I right or wrong? Well, when you you were talking... You figure Cleopatra, even as early as it was in the 60s, had cost a number of millions. Yeah. One, two, three million, I assume. Yeah. Probably. So. What was that, Cecil B. the Mills movie? Uh, or? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. You might be probably right. Yeah, well, um... But anyway, uh, yeah, are you... Can put that on the thing? Huh? On YouTube? Yeah. Just now. Yeah, now, oh, we're here with... We uh, your input, too. We're here with William H. Morrill III. And Okay, and aside from William H. Morrow III, we have aspiring actor, Mr. Sal Cotri. How are you doing today, sir? Good, very good. How are you doing? Great, great. Um, the sh- uh, show business, th- this is proof that, you know, you ha- there's a lot of luck involved. You cannot just waltz into an agency and demand, you know, uh, to be uh, heard. And, uh, That's right. It does take a break. It really does. Yeah, it Sadly. Does. Sadly, it's yes. like sports too. The best don't always make it. The best don't always play. Uh, you just don't know. It takes a lot of luck. In fact, your, your actors will tell you today, I got a break. It takes luck. I'm not the best actor out there, they've said. They said, I got a break. I got a TV show or a spot. It takes a break. So, uh, And I've seen so, so many great, great actors. I think some of the best acting jobs I've seen throughout history are your supporting actors. They should have a separate award show for supporting actors on all these TV series and movies. Phenomenal performances. Character acting. Nobody recognizes them. It's incredible. Their delivery, their lives are better than the leading characters. Let's be honest, people, we've all seen it there. Okay, so uh, they don't get the recognition. Why do we single out certain people, always a star, or this and that? Please stop. It's, it's just, I don't mean to swear on your show, but it's total bullshit. It really is. It's hey, whatever you want. I'm a, the show's so, uncensored. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to offend people either because everybody gets offended nowadays, too. Yeah, we, so. we don't worry about it. They might get mad that I blink my eyes uh, more than twice or something. Yeah. You know, so who knows, right, Sal? Yeah, yeah you're uh, walking on eggshells nowadays. That's true. Have you encountered much uh, favoritism or anything on sets when you go for your shoes? No, I haven't. You've been okay so far? Yeah, I've been okay so far. That's good. Well, let's shot that interview right down the tubes. Thank you, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. But you just don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes you just don't know what's There's going to so, happen. Think how much great talent is out there. You just have to be confident. <coughs> you have to be you confident. Be, you cannot be, like, discouraged if you get, like... Rejected. Rejected, so you just have to keep on so, coming. So, and it's almost like you have going. to expect to hear the word no. And then you won't get... Right. You don't exactly. get devastated, yeah. If you don't yeah. get rejected, you've got a problem. 
the greatest throughout history have been rejected. Right. Actors, singers, the Beatles, I mean, you know. Uh, Rolling Stones, too, right? Stones, oh, all of them. The greatest screenplays, every single one has been rejected. Yeah, I mean, I have, like, some real big ambition in this, but... We you know, should. But, you know, I'm every time I get rejected, I keep going on and on and on. I gotta keep plugging. You, know? you should. You should. I don't. Nothing is 100% anyway. Right, yeah. So you're going to get rejected. That's why. I keep going. And just consider them if they reject you. You're stupid. Then you find out where they live and bomb their house. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm kidding you. I don't mean that. No, Why not? Me. Sounds like a good idea. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, have, they have the right to decide. Just Their decision is stupid. El stupido. They make the wrong decisions many times. Right. Well, look how many people in certain, most of your biggest movies, the ones you see in the movie were never the first choice in the starring roles. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Well, remember the original... Apollo Creed was Ken Norton. And he had an he had an obligation for a fight. He couldn't do it, so they got Carl Weathers. I don't think anyone could ever have done what Carl Weathers. Carl had. Weathers was he, outstanding. He beyond outstanding. And he, he was in Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Afterwards, right? afterwards, afterwards. Afterwards, with Jesse in Ventura. Movie called Action Jackson. That was a TV well. show. He was in Action Jackson. That was really? a TV it's show. A TV movie. No, it was that was a Carl movie. Weathers. No, he had a TV show too, I think. No, no, but this one here was like a movie. Yeah, was Richard Round in the theaters? As was well. Richard yeah. Roundtree in that? The guy from. No. I don't remember no. who was in it, but all I know was him and the other uh, another actress. Her name I forgot. But Carl Weathers was is no. Apollo Creed. Uh, no one could do as well as he did. He did great. It was there's an example of a supporting character. Which in Rocky he was in a lot, so he's more like a co-starring star. He was excellent, just excellent. Uh, uh, Burgess Meredith as Mickey. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Adrian, she was phenomenal. Yeah, she was in The Godfather. I think that movie was tremendous, yes. That movie was excellent casting. Excellent yeah, casting. Um, yeah, she was in The Godfather. Um, Even down to Buckets. Dog. That was his real dog. That was real dog. Yeah, that was in real life. Dog. Yeah. And he, uh, somebody was trying to get rid of him. He, uh, somebody that I think he ran saved it. it. He saved it. He though. saved. He adopted Butkus. Good for Stallone. It was a. It was Good a. It him. was a. Uh, an adult. It was an English mastiff, bull mastiff, and he. What about Cuff and Link? That was the turtles. Cuff and Link. Who could forget them? Yeah, you know what he when says. When those two turtles del delivered their lines, I was amazed. You know what he said when he had Adrian in, in his apartment for the first time? He says, you, you remember, uh, no, he says, uh, I want to introduce you to my turtles, Cuff and Link. And she said, yeah, I know them. I sold them to you in the pet shop. Oh, I forgot that part. You're that right. was funny. I forgot that part. Oh, God. Actually, that place was actually a pet, sh pet shop. Really? Uh, yeah. It was then all oh, with his yeah. money, his budget, he's, I'm sure he was all in that real location. Kensington Avenue and yeah, or the library, Philadelphia Library, for example. And, uh, Philadelphia. Do you know when he started tra training and jogging down the street and all those kids came out of nowhere and following him? Yeah. None of that was planned. No, the first Rocky. No, that was No, that was in the first Rocky. Really? Yeah. Remember when all those kids followed him? Yeah. None of that was written. He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know what happened. They weren't in Rocky. Yes, they were. Yes, it was. They, they all came out rushing. He said, they just got, got into it and followed me. And we looked at the dailies and we said, leave it in. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. But really, that was Rocky. No, it wasn't. Rocky it was Rocky he One. Himself. No, he doesn't. I just saw it he jogs night. down the street. Okay, we trust me. Jimmy's gonna get wet there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I saw it, yeah, last, last night. Rocky I One. It. Okay. All right. Yeah, they had a Rocky Marathon to, again for the second time this over the weekend. Yeah. Over the weekend. Great. I watched the one with Great. Tommy Gunn who died of AIDS. Tommy uh, Morrison. Tommy Morrison, uh, yeah. job, uh, John Wayne's uh, nephew. Nephew. Now Talia Shire, yes, she wasn't. Uh, she did play the sister of uh, of uh, Michael Corleone. That was Godfather. just before because the first Rocky came out in '77. Yes. Now Burgess Meredith did that that famous Twilight Zone episode where he was uh, a librarian. All the time in the world. He was a librarian, and and the state it was like a fascist state, and they said you have been declared obsolete. No, that was a different one. Oh, that was, was different. Where he had the wife. He was in the bank vault when the nuclear bomb went off. 
Yeah. And he came out and everything was devastated. But he found a library and all the books were stacked. Yeah. Oh, they wanted books. to destroy the, They all wanted the, to destroy all books. No, no. His wife tried to destroy all his books because all he did was read. Right. But he lived and everybody else was gone. And at the end, he goes to reach, you know, oh, my God, he gets stacks, Keats, Shirley, this, all the time in the world to read. He went to reach for a book and his glasses fell off and cracked. And his final words were like, it's not fair. It's just not fair. Well, that was the second Twilight Zone ad- episode. There was another one where he was a librarian in some futuristic society. He was like a relic, he, like the the last of the librarians. I don't remember that. And um, I've seen them all. I think I thought. So, uh, yeah, and they what they did was people that were considered uh, not good enough just to live, were not superior, they were terminated, they were executed and... Uh, it's and like soil and green, you become 30, they make you into little green hamburgers. <laughs> soil and like green. That, so. that was like the early spirulina, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Which led to kill. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if uh, industries were fair and, and truly looked for the greatest talents like you, like you, you experienced in sports and in, in football was horrible. Office politics. Well, ever since high school, clear back in high school, when I moved up here from Texas. Uh, it's ridiculous what you have to go through. Yeah, and like I said earlier, the best don't always play, or the best don't always get the job. And you were outstanding quarterback too. Yes, I was. Throw- Not to brag. I'm sorry to sound like I am. Throwing bullets. Not. Bullets. They call them lasers and howitzers. So, but got to wait your turn, as they say, which is why I walked out of camp. Right. So, right, so. Yep. And then there's old-fashioned quality, like uh, the story you told me about the uh, original CEO of, of uh, Sony decided that uh-huh. everybody was making fun of the, of the words made in Japan, and he changed all that. He said, this has got to stop. And the quality turned around for all Japanese companies. Same with uh, South Korea. Yeah. And recently, in the 90s and now to the you know, 21st century with, uh, with Kia. I mean, not Kia. Well, well yeah, yes, Kia. And uh, Sa- LG, Samsung, Samsung uh, Hyundai. Hyundai. They make great quality products. The Japanese make incredible. Yeah. Uh, Panasonic, Samsung, Sharp, JVC, they all make great great quality products. Well, you're talking about long-term versus short-term profits. For what? Running, running a, 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 a business or any organization, think, always think long-term. you got to. you not got return qu- customers. Not quarterly. You don't want somebody buying one TV and it sucks and say, I'll never buy a so-and-so again. You want somebody to say, oh, it's the best TV I ever had. And wor- all I will get And, and great word of mouth yeah. after that. Yeah, word of mouth can make you or break you. So that's very important too. Yeah. Well, look how long the Vitamix has been around in existence. But now you've got a great competitor that's really clobbering at big time, which is your uh, your Ninja. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. I saw the uh, commercial for that. It's I phenomenal. Saw the Their blade system is second to nothing for, else around. For ninety nine dollars, you can buy a Ninja versus four hundred dollars for a Vitamix. That does more, and they give you more in the whole bit. The horsepower. I mean, great. the uh, the wattage is there. The blades are superior to the you've got Vitamix. Three levels. Yeah. Which take, they show right on their show. There's the Vitamix, there's theirs. They put the same ingredients in them, but there's like, it's done. And the other one is still trying, but it's just not doing it. Yeah. So it's an it's a attitude. It's just a, a it's mindset. It's a spirit of competition. They said, this is great. We can make it better. And that's what they set out to do. No monopolies. Have lots of competition. If you did it, we can do this better. See, this is why I... Not to interrupt, but you would think we could... How can we make a better blender or processor or all-in-one unit? Think about that. And they did. Yeah. So there you go. This is why I always liked, uh, I always believed in supporting small companies, entrepreneurs, because these are, these are the ones that really have to fight to build their business, and they're going to give you quality. Which leads to the others trying to catch up, and they'll improve their quality, too. Right. It well, almost lifts everybody up by the bootstraps. Right. Like, let's say you got a blue chip company who's too big for their britches, and they rest on their laurels, and they get cocky. All of a sudden, the, the small like, company... Whoa, wait a minute here. Yeah. Yeah, whoa. Wait, who are these guys? They came out of nowhere. Yeah. They're kicking our butts right now. You know? Right? Exactly. So, you know, but... Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of interesting information, behind the scenes information connected with motion pictures, entertainment, even pro wrestling. If you read some of the books, the, um, the, the books written by retired wrestlers, there's a lot of dirt oh, that, uh, right. that fans... having cheating, hurting other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, same thing with entertainment. There's a lot of... Uh, oh, entertainment world is, is horrible. Cutthroat. It's cutthroat and deceitful, which is why some of the biggest... <laughs> Your bigger stars of today, or the past 20, 30 years, like Harrison Ford, for example, right. will not live in that Hollywood scene. He lives in Utah, many others live in Utah, Montana, whatever. They want no part of that Hollywood party scene. They ask kissing the whole bit. Johnny Depp lives in, in France, out, uh, in yeah, Paris. He, so part of it, he goes, if you want me for your movie, I'll be there. But I'm not going to live out here. He, they don't like that scene. You yeah. see, they want to keep their sanity. And Lady Gaga, for example, you know, all her weird co you know, she is one of the most sweetest down-to-earth women there is. So that's her gimmick. She's a beautiful girl. Yeah. Very intelligent. And she even said, I'm a homebody. You said Marilyn Manson was well, not... No, I didn't say Marilyn. I never wrote Marilyn Manson. But Lady Gaga says, this is all an act. Yeah. But she's a sweet, yeah. intelligent. Yeah. She's promoting herself. Yeah. She's not a weirdo yeah. or a wacko. Alice Cooper is, is really a very intelligent, oh, normal guy. Well, one of the people that, who, sadly, he's passed away years ago, Frank Zappa never did drugs or alcohol, he said. He looked like the typical druggie. But he said, "I never did." No, but Frank alcohol. Zappa and he did I was watching. I was book. watching Frank Zappa's yeah. uh, interviews. Yeah. He is a highly, or he was, a highly intelligent man. He knew yeah. what was going on politically in, oh, in yeah, the world, like George Carlin, another or guy. Jesse, uh, uh, Jesse Ventura. Yes. A brilliant man. Yeah. But if you e if you ever listen to all the old Zappa interviews, yeah. And he knew what was going on. And he was aware. And, you, and even like when Carlin did a show, you walked away learning a lot from it. Sure. He he used comedy as a way of making a point. Exactly. He used comedy as a way of being serious in essence. Yeah. If you think about that. So uh, Well, their message was that well, that you know, the system is rigged. And the fat cats are, well, are putting the screws to the to the little guy. Right. So many people get hurt, and you know, sadly to say, anybody listening out there, I don't like our legal system. Too many people have been hurt by it. Innocent people, as we read. Too many guilty people have gotten away yeah. with basically. You think judges? Murder. You think a lot of judges are on the take? Like 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 I politicians? I don't know about a lot, but I'm sure a good many are. Yes, yeah. I do. They're human. Should be they're human beings, okay? They have weaknesses and frailties like anybody else. It's like I said to a, a judge once we met. I forget where it was. I was in a, a club, a bar, or whatever. He was, I'm a judge, blah blah blah. And I said, oh wow. I said, I said, I said, Your Honor, I said, Judge, let's be honest here. Are you human? He goes, yes. Why? I said, aren't all humans fallible? You can't be perfect. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. All humans are fallible. Don't think you're above everything because you have the title judge. Many judges have been stripped down and some sent to prison too. Uh, yeah. Governors. Uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Fatso? From Chicago, from Chicago. Oh, the Chicago. Illinois governor. Uh, oh, uh... uh B B Blagojevich. Blagojevich, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not immune. Don't think because I'm a governor I can get away with That he's murder. above the law, yeah. That's right. So, you've now, got to be honest here. Some have even tried to tamper with the Constitution, and they, and they have. The Fourth Amendment, uh, First Amendment, and uh, trying to turn the United States into a, fa a fascist police state. Uh, but you don't realize other people are at stake here. You try to do these things, who are you hurting in the long run? Mm -hmm. And do you really think you can get away with it? Yeah, temporarily, again, back short-term, long-term. Short-term, short temporarily, long-term, no, you won't. You will get caught. Right. So, yes, so you've got to watch what you do. You're an elected official, and you're scoring your people. Why? How much money do you need? How much more do you want to eat? How many cars do you need? How much is enough, really? You're making so much already. Why the greed? It, it doesn't end. It's, it. a, it's like a sickness. It's like a sickness. It is like a sickness because I would never. I don't need a lot. It's very sociopathic. It doesn't too. take much to make me happy. You know, really, I I don't understand this greed part. 
so, uh, I mean, at the expense of what? Children going to bed starving, you know, in a world? Oh, no, I mean, you look at these commercials, the animals being harmed, the children, like you said, starving in other nations within our own country. Uh, it just makes you sick. I One country was using perfectly good, adorable dogs at, for shark bait. Putting Isn't a double that, trouble oh, hook through their, no, through their I jaw. Oh, see, I, don't I saw that on, on Facebook. No, I'd rather go for them and kill every one of those guys that does that. You know how infuriate, you know I how... Could, I could kill each of those guys without blinking an eye. And I'm not a violent person. But you know how angry that made a lot, a lot of people were furious angry. when they saw that. Oh, oh. Listen, while you guys talk, I'm going yeah. to take a short break. Yeah, All right. well, I'll, uh, uh, you want to talk about hardcore fitness? No, or you want to take a break? Another, I'll take a break. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this dog looks oh, please, I scared at... You. I don't want to hear any more. Okay, please. scared out of his mind. I'd okay. Not, that just really is upsetting. I love animals that much. Yeah. No, no. Like, hu humans have become, have lost their empathy and compassion. Well, people that do this aren't human in my book. No, they're not. They're the organs of a human. But you're not a human. The human has certain emotions and character. Like too. demons. They you don't have, you're, you're, you're a demon with human organs. Yeah. Is what you really are. Yeah. Okay. I will be right back. All right. Okay? Much knowledge Yes, you do. You're good. You're good. Speak your piece. Yeah. yeah. Now, com piece. computers, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of hacking going on. It's going to only get worse. In computers and the internet. It, it's, it's going to get worse. It's severe. It's extremely severe. My, uh, my political group got sabotaged by a hacker. And I, I went from over 800 members to, down to three members last week. Uh, in over, been corrected, by the way. Overnight. I haven't heard anything back from Facebook. I sent them, I presented them with the problem. I mean, I don't have three members now. I got over 70. I'm, I'm trying to make a comeback. I changed the name of the group, but I was hacked. Why? I don't know. I was getting too big, maybe. Uh, somebody, somebody that knew how to hack tried to stick it to me, you know? Wow. This is wrong. You don't do that to people. Yeah, yeah. Well, very dishonest world, you know? How do you feel? You about what? Oh, you mean in, in general? Right. In general, I feel okay. Everything. Computer, music, film. Uh, how do you feel? There's fair and unfair things going on in everything. Big time. Big time. You know, and they, they do it, they sabotage, and they hack because they can, and they know how to do it. It's sad that the good sometimes have to suffer, isn't it? At the but, hands of the bad. But they're cowardly. They would never face you. They would never contact you directly oh, no, or face faceless. you. Faceless and emotionless. It's all done by electronics. They don't want to confront you in any way. Yeah. No way. There's a lot of scammers in uh, in Nigeria, in Ghana, and uh, Africa, unfortunately. and all that. Yeah, but all those... Uh, foreign lotteries where you've won without playing. That's legit, you know. Oh, sure. Oh, you mean when you have to send them... lottery or whatever, where you, you're a winner already. Yeah. But you never played in the lottery. Now, how can that be? Well, you mean where you have when you have to send a fee uh, a fee. of 29... Yeah. Well, if I won $100 million, deduct that from the check you sent me. Please. Ooh, they don't want to hear that, do they? No. Why is that? Twenty nine ninety five to collect your uh, take. Twenty nine ninety five. Take ten thousand off of right. my hundred million. I don't mind. And what about the fake inheritance? The fake well, inheritance. I've heard of that. Yeah, I get. I get like. I get him from uh, that um, a, a long lost relative in Nigeria. Died and, yeah, le and left. You've got a lot of family members in Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> left his really? estate. Left his estate to yeah, me. His estate. <clears throat> what was that? A palm tree and a dead rhinoceros. Yeah. I mean, come on. But there's a lot of gullible people out there. That's the sad so part. I know they all buy it. They buy it. They Listen, like it. If there weren't you know, suckers, right? if there wasn't a sucker born every minute or every second, would no, these I think they're being born more frequently nowadays. But but yeah, every nanosecond. Yeah. But but these scammers would not exist. They won't be able to scam if there's not a scam e, right? It's sad uh, people buy into this stuff. Desperate people, uh, I mean? It's, it's just odd. You know? You're a winner. How can you be a winner when I never played? <laughs> How'd that happen? How did I win the lottery? I never played your lottery. I, you know? Yeah. You know some people that have done that. Are uh, it's absolutely. Uh, uh, gullible. Yeah, gullible yeah. people, sure. So, they get things through the mail and they believe it. I know. And so, once you, once you, once you mail, once you send... Oh, a, you're on their list. You're, you're screwed. Yeah, once you send away for yeah. something once, 
and you're a sucker once. You are screwed big time. They sell. They've got you. Yeah. Your name and address is sold to probably thousands, hundreds of thousands, or tens of thousands. That's why they, when they call me, they say, I won. What's your name? I said, Saw Country. Ha 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 ha. I don't do No, I don't. No, I don't. Saw Country. <laughs> Watch you get the thing this week. You yeah. won the lottery. You know, Mr. Hey, Godfrey. Hey, he, you 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 could there. you could do a new show uh, uh, of you being a teacher and call it a Welcome Back Godfrey for for Bollywood. Anything, yeah. Welcome back, welcome back in India, and you can say da da da. It's the best you've got. That's pretty bad. Well, how come all your jokes are hilarious and all mine are, are cheesy and bad? Because they're mine. <laughs> when they're mine, they're good. <laughs> it's so simple. It's an easy formula, am I right? No, I'm not kidding. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, welcome back, Cotter. Well, come on, Welcome Jimmy back, Cotter. Well, it was Welcome Back, Cotter, you know. Yeah, do you remember that show? Welcome Back, Cotter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. John Travolta. Vinnie Barbarino, so yeah. Start. Sure. Um, so, the, getting back to the scammers, they, they all we once you get on their mailing list, they all got you, and and they and it's well, they also sell those mailing lists to other yes. people that want mailing lists. So you you're scattered all over the globe. And you know who they prey on? I give you one guess. Elderly. That's right, because they then know they're lonely and they want to talk. So what's that mean? Don't get old. That's right. Because if you get old, you'll win the lottery. Well then, I should. Wait, they'll glitch. They'll, they'll make you think you won the lottery. Then you'll be so old and feeble, you'll say, I told you, lovey, I won. <laughs> so that, bye bye. Is that why all the com is that why all the commercials in the day in the morning are all about like mausoleums and uh, and cr and uh, oh, I hate those crutches things. and, and uh, they try to talk so calmly. He said, "We care about you, your loved ones." Really? At Smith family, we know you're grieving. Yeah. Like, Hip replacement. Thank God for remote controls. Hip I'll replacement. Right away, you know. Cr 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 crutches. Oh, okay. Ah, right, yeah, sure. All right. Well, you gonna you gonna you gonna listen to it now? Okay. Well, um, we'll take a little break before we it's say. It's good. So. It's been a little good long one today. So that's yeah. Good all right. So you wanna wrap it up? Till next time. Is Everybody, it? good to see you all once again. Bye bye. All right. So, bye bye till the next time. Okay. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you, well, lost, you lost another, another argument, argument with the conservative, conservative right-wing right Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He, screamed he screamed and yelled, yelled he brought, brought out the Bible, he thumped it. He quoted scripture, scripture to you. And you were lost, lost because, because you came at him with facts. facts. Nothing, Nothing but, but facts. facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good, that would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read Censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read Censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian, Censored. Censored. That's, That's all, all you need. need. Read, Read it. it. And defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. 
go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another another argument argument with the conservative, conservative right-wing Republican. Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted quoted scripture scripture to you. You You were lost lost because because you came at him with facts. facts. Nothing but facts. facts. And you You expected that that would 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 make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, our voiceover artist, and um, like you saw but like you heard in the in the promo the very best way to be a part of this organization and join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter sensor just go to newslettercensor.com and click on that printable order form and get your subscription now it's the very best way to join us um, very invigorating indeed with mr. Morrow he was very uh, he had a lot to say as usual, and uh, you know, it was always, always nice visiting with him. Now, speaking of uh, uh, diet, um, you know, my mother was passing out uh, a little more than usual. She was passing out. I had to pick her off the floor, you know, put her in a chair. She had trouble sitting in a chair, so she kept on passing out. Long story short, I had to call the... Now how is that possible? How is that possible? Because the little thing ain't up. Thank you. Now it's going to go... Yeah, bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 quang, 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 quang. It's going to make that stupid noise. Well, I could wait. I mean, I could... uh, yeah, Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll stop it and then, you know... It'll start making that stupid racket, and we'll presume. But uh, she has. Long story short, she has hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. So she has to start a new, very strict diet and follow it. And she's complying. Her whole life eating the wrong foods. Her whole life. 
And this is what was tied in to her symptoms, her many, many negative symptoms that she had. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, oh, by the way, um, Dr. Bill had told me that the do not call uh, organization or website from the government is over with. That uh, thanks to probably the Republican Congress, uh, the, the companies and scammers and solicitors and all kinds of salespeople, spammers, have the green light to call your home phone and your cell phone, as well as send you hundreds of spam in your email. Total green light. And of course, knowing how deregulated American companies are now uh, with your wireless provider, they will charge you to listen to unwanted voicemails, which I think is extremely unfair uh, to actually use the time taken uh, to listen to a voicemail uh, unless you have unlimited minutes. A lot of people have unlimited minutes nowadays, like through T-Mobile. Well, people are not going to tolerate uh, anything less than unlimited minutes. <coughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I won't use the what phone. What happens when you don't have any choice? I won't use the phone. Uh, what I'll do is I'll use the phone if, um, well, you know, it started out where you only had so many minutes. Then eventually... It started out with free TV. Right. Thank you. Like, I won't use... Like, if I'll screen the calls, and uh, if it's somebody I wish to speak to at the moment, I'll pick it up, but I'll keep it brief. Get right to the point. And, of, of course, uh, I have a home phone through the cable company, uh, digital, with unlimited minutes, un unlimited calling nationwide. So I can use that, but uh, as far as cell phones go, which is what everybody has now, nobody really gets a landline anymore. There's no need for it. Uh, the plans go, like with T-Mobile, you have uh, $35 or so with unlimited minutes and unlimited text. But uh, like the when the poor folk, po folk, get Assurance Wireless, they have to pay for the time that they take to listen to their voicemail. That comes off of their minutes, which is very unfair. You know. Now, what I was saying before about hypoglycemia, my mom's diet. Very strict diet, but you know what? It's not complicated. It's simple and basic. It's more or less Atkins, high protein, low carb, uh, low sugar diet. And no refined carbohydrates, no refined sugar. And you have to eat several smaller meals throughout the day, high protein meals and snacks, instead of having three large meals. So what she has near her is nuts to snack on. Uh, she can eat cheese, but, but, hey, also William H. Morrill III is hypoglycemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. So what happened, and so is, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Yeah. Joe. Who is usually under good control and has had two attacks in the last week, two weeks. Yes, but, but you have your new diet down pat. Your new system is regimented and you, you know what you made. I had the diet. Three meals a day, I was perfect. There's something going on with the food. So now you have to, uh, you have to make sure you refrain from any GMO foods. Mm. Do not accept any uh, any any of the, the toxic garbage handout foods that come, you know, from a question poor, yeah. questionable source. And you have to break down your high protein meals. You you just can't have three big ones. You have to try to break well, it. Well, that's down. only because I cannot load my stomach. What uh, about I having have to get back to uh, you know? What about having appetite. more than one smaller nut and seed meal? Yeah. Throwing an extra nut and seed meal in, in there. Yeah, a smaller one and then the larger one at yeah. 9 o'clock. Okay, now this is what is puzzling me. Uh, 
the hospitals in Orthodox medicine with the with their registered dietitians who incidentally have to acquire a master's degree to learn how to put together those garbage menus. I have no idea why they need a master's degree when they're wrong many times. They uh, they told my mom she has to eat low fat cheese. So, so in other words, they demonize all fats. Well, they demonize fats. They're continually doing that. And you need essential fatty acids to uh, buffer, I mean to, to balance your blood sugar, to keep your blood sugar balanced so you feel full. But they are using the calorie method for weight loss. Calories in, calories out. In, uh, in your mother's. It's outdated. Exactly. <clears throat> so you that's why they're doing that with the... Instead of following the the old uh, Robert Atkins, Carlton Fredericks, Richard Passwater, so et cetera, et cetera, uh, ketogenic diet plan uh, where you count carbohydrates, they are counting calories and there are still professionals out there who are dietitians and personal trainers who are still adhering to the caloric restricted diet which does not work because when you restrict calories your body thinks it's like starving it goes into a starvation mode and it slows down the metabolism mm -hmm. a pound of muscle at rest uses 50 calories just to maintain itself just to survive so therefore the more muscle the more lean mass you have the higher your metabolism which comes from strength training which comes from um, uh, in, ingesting enough protein. Thyroid. Yeah, true. Now, if somebody's got a, gl a glandular disorder, like uh, uh, let's say they're uh, hy hypothyroidism, yeah. hypo hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. or their adrenals mm -hmm. are burnt out, uh, you, I would suggest taking the uh, organic raw glandular. Uh, capsules which you can get online. You, Swanson sells them. They're very inexpensive. You can get uh, raw thyroid you, or you can take raw adrenal uh, if you need to, you know. Um, and um, the one for athletes <coughs> who need a little lead in their pencil, you know, your older men, older men out there that have a problem getting enough lead in your pencil and you need a testosterone boost. Uh, I just want to say that the raw uh, gonad, <coughs> the, they call it Orchic, O-R-C-H-I-C, okay. the raw bull's balls. Coming from the word uh, testicle. Testicle. Orchid. Really, really works. I know it for a fact, it works. How does it work? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's similar to like homeopathy. You're getting a small amount of the 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 organ that needs to be jump started, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, what I want to get to before we continue our show is that uh, in 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 order to make room in the refrigerator in the freezer for my mother's uh, new healthy uh, diet, I had to. Um, eat some uh, of her um, frozen uh, Mama Celeste pizzas. Let me tell you something. First of all, I don't think Mama Celeste exists. I think she's a fictitious character, just like the Quaker Oatmeal dude. Or Betty Crocker. Yes. Or maybe, was Uncle Ben's real? Uncle Ben's did not. No, okay. Mama Celeste. There ain't no Mama Celeste. And it's the most horrible disgusting tasting pizza I've ever had in my life. And the cheese is crap, it's uh, uh, artificial. How it's on earth what do these American food companies get away with this shit? Putting it, it putting an Italian, old, old Italian lady on a box, making people think it's like an old family recipe, and it's nothing but crap. Mm -hmm. And nobody calls them out on it except me. Well, well, it's my shillelagh. You know, you know that's, that's like, uh, that's like uh, the people over in, let's say, Arizona or New Mexico or stuff like that. They'll tell you that uh, Pizza Hut, 
is is good is like a real pizza. So it's relative. Pizza Hut had nothing to do with real pizza. You P want a real pizza, you go to New York or New Jersey. Pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John. Oh, that son of a bitch. That that uh, that's the uh, the scumbag CEO that I hate. He's not even Italian either. What's his name? Shratman or I don't know. He's a piece of shit that you he doesn't want to. He has he does not want to supply health insurance to yeah. his employees. Same thing, period. Yeah. Now he's bitching about Obamacare. Anyway, these are not examples of real pizza. Exactly. But but to people that live out west, maybe that's the only pizza they've exactly. ever encountered. Exactly. They can't make a choice. Because they really never had a, a Lombardi pizza or, you know. Yeah, the oldest pizzeria in, in the United States. Wood yeah. burning s stove in, in, uh, in, in uh, um, New York. In New York City, in Manhattan. It's a historic landmark, Lombardi's Pizza. You know, and there are others too. There's one mm -hmm. by me called uh, Brooklyn style brick oven pizza. Uh, it's um, charcoal burning, uh, you know, they use natural ingredients and it's owned by the, uh, the, the Grimaldi family that owns uh -huh. Patsy's in the city, the famous Patsy's ah, restaurant. Yes. And they, they have one here in Hackensack and you know, you pay a little more but you're getting fresh mozzarella, freshly sliced toppings, you know. But you go to the supermarket and you see companies like Red Baron, Tombstone, yeah. this bogus Mama Celeste, this is all garbage. Mm -hmm. So I have to make room. So I don't have that many to polish off left. <laughs> they're, they're, they're only small personal. Well, if you happen to be a like a very tiny person, you're, nah. you're, they're personal pizzas. But uh, it's unbelievable. So Hall of Shame to the company, to all the companies, all the American food companies that make frozen pizzas. I'm not going to just... Uh, bash, out. bash, Mama Celeste. I'm gonna bash them all. Mm -hmm. And also, let me tell you something. Boston Market's frozen pot pies are not, and I repeat, not the same pot pie that you would get at a Boston Market location. They're drastically inferior to that, mm -hmm. and uh, it's another company that makes it for Boston Market to slap the Boston Market name on it to sell it in the freezer section of supermarkets. So shame on you to that company too. You all suck, you're all scumbags, you're all greedy, trying to shove more toxins into America's mouth and poison us slowly. Yes. You're done with your gastronomic... Uh, uh, all right, I'll take it anyway. Okay, now we will sink our teeth once again into these readings. <laughs> sink them good. Mayor Jeffrey Jones of Patterson, New Jersey has issued a challenge to one of the potential contenders for the 2016 Republican presidential nomination. Here's a guy. And it's not the man currently sitting in the governor's office in Trenton. So it is a man who's issuing a, a challenge. While he himself cannot even control his own deteriorating city. Let's see. Uh, can anybody do that? Patterson. With Patterson and Camden and Trenton and well, he, Newark. He, 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 start, he got off to a very uh, bad start by cutting the police force in Patterson quite a bit. Ooh. You know, you, you know, you don't, you don't allow Patterson to become like a Dodge City. Speaking of police, there was a video on Facebook the other day. And what are you going to say? With two gigantic bald-headed policemen Working somebody over. Working some little black guy over. Unarmed. Unarmed. And for what, I don't know. The video doesn't make it clear. But they're only, as professionals, they're only supposed to apprehend and subdue and well, and arrest them, incarcerate them. They're, it's not their job to dish out 
torture. These two big Burly. Galzoons could not subdue this guy. Maybe he was on drugs. They were beating him with the baton, etc., 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 on the floor. Then about a whole bunch of police, uh, they must have put out the call for other, you know, regions to come. And all these police came running through the door and everything. Somebody tases the guy. And he still don't want to put his hands behind his back to get cuffed. And he shits all over the place. The smell is horrible. They're all gagging and this, that, and the other thing. I, I guess certain drugs give you superhuman strength. Well, we don't know what it was. They, we don't know what his a crime, if he uh, was well, a crime, was. They just post the video. They don't tell yeah. you. They don't give you any details. Whatever it was, it, it obviously was over the over the line for the police with the way they acted. You know what I'm saying? And the two big burly guys couldn't handle this one guy. It reminded me of. Uh, can we all just get along? Rodney King. Rodney King, man, they couldn't they, they couldn't subdue him either. You mean they could not shackle his hands? Yeah, they could not get him down on his uh, <coughs> stomach and arm and uh, cuff him. But what I'm trying to say is the police t today are militarized and have gone too far, and there is no they are not out to protect you. It said you may call them to your house, and you know what? They'll kill your dog or they'll kill you, or they'll kill some relative of yours. Well, they, uh, we, they don't get the story right. Recently, there was a, a man that was acting real crazy, ranting, and he was he was in public and he was naked, and the cops shot him dead. Instead go. of like apprehending him and throwing a, a, a blanket or something over him and putting him in the, in, in the paddy wagon, they just shot him. And there's no reason. They got away with it, by the way. Oh, yes, they do. Why, why are you shooting a person who might be mentally ill or, or on drugs? And, and if, if he wasn't endangering anyone's <laughs> life, he was just ranting like a crazy man and, and he was naked, why do you have to kill him? You know, so that, like you said, uh, uh, stormtroopers, militarized police. Well, you know, it's, just, it's an old story, but, uh, you know, they, they, they continue to go after uh, vitamins and doctors that give vitamins, etc. with SWAT teams. They're still doing it. You need SWAT teams to They've go... They've been doing it since Carlton Fredericks. You, you, know. you need a SWAT team to go after people that yeah. are peddling vitamins? Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're dangerous. Yeah, they're gonna They'll throw that bottle at you. They're going to blow up. The, do the, the vitamins are really C4 explosives. Oh, they're going to blow whatever. up. Offended by comments that Representative Paul Ryan, <coughs> uh, Republican of Wisconsin, oh, our favorite, recently made regarding people living in poverty, oh, brother. The Ma Mayor Jones sent the 2012 GOP vice presidential candidate a letter inviting him to Patterson. Fat chance. Jones cited in his letter Ryan's comments on a national radio program in which he <coughs> talked of men not working and just generations of men not even thinking about working or learning the value of work. Yeah, find them the work. Jones wrote in his letter that he expected a little more from Ryan. Come to Patterson, Ryan. I'll take you around the streets of one of the poorest cities in New Jersey and you can meet the families of people who work two and three jobs to put food on the table and clothes on their children. Since you seem not to understand causes of inner city poverty, they will be happy to explain to you the forces which have caused our urban cores to spiral downward to the point of despair. Poverty is not a condition anyone would choose. Impoverished neighborhoods are not the result of lazy black men, but rather the result of 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow laws, housing policies, redlining which resulted in the confinement of whole races of people in substandard areas with substandard educational and employment opportunities. 
Ryan Stapp <coughs> said on Wednesday that he had not yet received the letter. His spokesman, <coughs> excuse me, Alan, well, William Allison, said the congressman appreciates the invitation, but but did not say whether he plans to take up Jones on his offer. I don't think he's interested. Of course he's not. Why, it might interfere with his propaganda agenda. He'd have to tell the truth. God forbid. His propaganda is to racially uh, single out and stereotype the the poor minorities and uh, and to actually to single out and stereotype the poor in America in general poverty in America it's all their fault and it's your own fault That's which right. which which in other in other words what it really means is we don't care about you those we don't want to help you those who have are blessed by God right and those that have not they don't care about them it's yeah. a tough tough uh, because it's their fault uh, um, it's just too damn bad, and it's their, your own fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have no plan. They have no solution for the poor. Of course not. Did they, you see any Republicans offer any solutions for Obamacare? But they want to repeal it. They want to get rid of it. Want to but defund it. They want to do this, that, the other thing. For what are you going to replace it with? There's no. There's, there's what, no solution for them. Are the Republicans going to replace it with universal health care? Uh. So for Paul Ryan to take up the mayor of Patterson's invitation and walk around Patterson meeting the salt of the earth people there, that that equals finding a solution for the poor of America. And I, I don't think that's something that a Republican politician wants to do. Mm -mm. Has Christie ever done it? Mm -mm. Has he ever uh, walked around with the mayor of Patterson? No. So and you expect Paul Ryan from Wisconsin to do this? No, I don't expect Paul Ryan to do any of that. Chris. He won't do it. If Chris Christie hasn't done it yet, uh. You know, I mean, uh, honestly, do you think Chris Christie wants to get yelled at by a 1001 Patterson he families? Already, oh. Uh, well, yeah, he's always, somebody's always No, he's been yelled at by the Republicans because of his uh, uh, actually hugging Mr. Obama when he came uh, to check up on uh, uh, Storm Sandy. In other words, Remember? Obama's... He got all kinds of grief. Obama's the enemy, but, yes. but Christie needs help from the federal government, but... The Republicans don't want him to be nice to Obama. How do, how do they expect Christie to get money for Sandy by being rude and uh, belligerent towards Barack Obama? Uh, I guess they don't. Remember, they do not think these things through. You ever see that Midas commercial with the hand? The hand? Yeah. Midas commercial. It's just the hand. No. And uh, he tells the guy to take it to take the car to Midas because you might just uh, some guy is going to probably want you to get a catalytic convertible convertible converter, <laughs> and all it could be was a loose gas cap. <laughs> so the guy, the hand says, "All right, let me drive," and it jumps up on his steering wheel, and then it's only a hand. So it says, "I didn't think this thing through." <laughs> He's got no legs, you know, to do anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What we're talking about it's is Republican. your typical crooked mechanic, who you know will charge a woman for things that they never did, exactly. or, or or a naive man. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, <laughs> Ryan agreed to meet with the Congressional Black Caucus after members of the group <coughs> branded his remarks on conservative William Bennett's talk radio show about inner city poverty highly offensive. Let's be clear. When Mr. Ryan says inner city, when he says culture, these are simply code words for what he really means. Black. Of course. That's what that means. Yeah, of course. That's when they say inner city, urban area, inner city, uh, they use the word the culture of the of the inner city, or they use the word ghetto. Yep. They mean they mean black. They mean black, yeah. Yeah. And 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 whatever they 
whenever they talk about America's poor, there's never any solution that, that goes along with it. There's no solution. Well, the only solution for them is cutting. Cutting and letting, All people, social letting people die, starve. Mm -hmm. You know, and I guess their solution for Obamacare is no care, right? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They never, they're not re replacing it with anything. No, it's never replacing What are they replacing it with? Nothing. Jeez. In the world of political deals in Bergen County, New Jersey, the more one fails, the more one succeeds. Really? Hence, the once Xanadu has been revived as the American dream. You know oh, Xanadu. Yeah, that, there, that project. That piece of crap building. That looks like shit. Yeah. It's ugly looking. There's some project in the Meadowlands by Giant Stadium that never became a reality. I keep on thinking of that dumb song. Xanadu. I don't know. In reality, is... it's all a nightmare. It's a stupid name. What does Xanadu mean anyway? It comes from a uh, fairy tale or something. What? It comes from a fairy tale or something. Z Xanadu is a lot of doo-doo. might it, even it, be in involved case. in the... Uh, what's that Arab tale about the... Uh, Arabian Nights? Yeah. Thousand and one auto... Uh, I mean... Might come from there, or the one with the uh, uh, open the door. Open sesame. Open sesame. I love sesame, especially in Halaba. You ever? What was his name, that guy? Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. Oh, was it Aladdin? Uh, Aladdin, yeah. I don't know. Aladdin? It could come from come some from something like that. The more authorities try to mitigate the disaster of this project, the more they're stuck by it. And the more deals are made that will ultimately fall on people's feet. So what should be done? Hold on. Okay. Declare the whole project was ill-conceived and get rid of this myriad of political bodies and start to clean up the body politic. Start by getting rid of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. Bunch of crooks. They make you pay to park. <laughs> they make you pay to, um, they make you pay for every little thing, man. That's not counting the price of the ticket. It's insane, you know, and you can't bring your own food and snacks into the stadium. Uh-huh. Exactly. I heard some, some guy was thrown out of a movie theater. He was diabetic. He was thrown out of a movie theater from bringing his own snacks and he couldn't really eat the food that was at the movie theater and then I hear he's suing. They, they tossed him out, you know. Uh, you know what? Crony capitalism is just totally, total corrupt, ill-gotten gains. It's, it's, it doesn't work. Capitalism itself doesn't work. Well, it does work for those on top. Yeah, and that's where it was meant to work. You filthy rich, yeah. yeah. For those who have, capitalism works because it involves capital. Yeah. Well, the have nots do not have capital. That is the problem. That's right. And that is why they need food stamps. That is why they need welfare. Because they don't have the capital to invest and make more capital. That is capitalism. Okay. Very simple. And, you know, uh, capitalism is only 200 years old or so. Oh, really? It's not uh, that it's been around for thousands of years. How come these uh, these stupid teabaggers throw the word um, fascism and communism in the same sentence? You fascist, commie, pinko, fascist, commie, commie. Like, they, they, they don't know anything. They're so freaking stupid. So well, they uneducated. They do not understand those uh, nuances. They do not understand nuance itself. They're like ca Larry, the ca Larry the Cable Guy wearing his bib overalls. <laughs> Showing his crack, his ass crack. Yeah, he's always saying everything made in America is the best. Ah, American won't stand for that. Ah, everything American is number one. Ah, rah, 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 rah. He's like an obnoxious 
Archie Bunker. I mean, no, he's not. He's not bigoted, but he. He's annoying because everything American, American made, anything that's from America is like better than everything else in the world. He's very obnoxious about it. He's a flag waver. American exceptionalism. Yeah, he's a flag waver. Okay. It doesn't exist. But to them it does. Because as the Puritans tried to point out, America is the yeah. in the world. Right before they they stole everything from the Native Americans and gave them smallpox. Tut tut, my friend. And, ga and gave them smallpox. Do not confuse me with facts. A letter to the editor stated that retired state employees should be subject to the New Jersey state income tax if they leave the state which would help fill the pension hole of New Jersey. I must strenuously, strenuously object to that way of thinking. I am a retired school teacher. I taught for 38 years. Each of my taxed paychecks include a pension contribution. And now my pension itself is taxed again. Oh no. At a higher tax rate than most of the one percenters. Unbelievable. No one should have the right to tell me or any other public employee that if I choose to spend my golden years in a warmer climate, I'll have to pay another tax. Uncle Phil says the only thing golden about the golden years is the urine. If you're taking enough pay of B vitamins, maybe. That he was in good shape and was very happy from his hooking up with a nice blue chip in his younger days. He had a big setback with the start stock market crash. That, I see. That happened. Uh, wow. Yeah, he lost about 40 percent. I don't know what he lost, but he lost a lot. Of his 401ks or whatever. Are you familiar with that stock market crash? Of course. Was it was it in the 90s sometimes? No, it was in 2007, 2008. Oh, really? Yeah. It was uh, yeah, with well, the financial bailout. That whole concept when you're, when you, the older generation people, like an uncle, tells you, you know, what well, you need to do, son, kid, kiddo, buckaroo, is to get hooked up with a big blue chip company and work hard for them and dedicate yourself for them and you and you'll end up retiring with that company and they'll take care of you and and blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? They get rid of you way before you collect any pension. Mm -hmm. Happened with uh, Iron Man Vinnie Blake with Cure Fart Navigations in, uh, in um, Say County, Say County, New Jersey. They laid him off after 14 years of loyal, dedicated service. Uh -huh. Why didn't you tell Uncle Philly there to pull himself up by the bootstraps and get another job? Well, that's what Republicans do. Well, yeah, so. No, they feed it back to no, them. They don't. They, Republicans really don't practice what they preach. Of course not. That's why you hit them with the hypocrisy constantly. Right. You know. Ain't going to switch all of them around. That's for damn sure. Because they're yeah. deceived. Give Revelation 12 9. Give you know? a man a fish, eat for a day, teach a man to fish, eat for a lifetime, unless the waterways are either polluted or privately owned. Then you will get arrested for fishing on somebody else's. Or Monsanto. Coast. Like, like its lousy, stinking hands into the fish product and degraded it. Speaking of Monsanto, I read a very interesting banner that made me think of my friend from Shanghai, China, uh, uh, concerning a Roundup Ready pesticides and kidney disease, hey. damaged kidneys. She, the poor, poor woman needs needs to get dialysis, and uh, I sent the uh, the homemade uh, 
the homemade uh, produce wash that was on Gary Null's uh, website web page. How to make your own produce wash for the pesticides. It's a correlation. Way, speaking of Gary Null, I was talking the other day. You know when uh, like you go out and you want to go into a movie or something of that nature. Right. Well, he said that uh, they did a study. They found that on the seats in the theaters in the second were faces. What? Faces. Shit! Oh, feces. So he I'm said not faces. talking about piles. I'm talking about things Tur that go through their pants. Turds. No, not turds. Just faces that are left over from people who just wipe their ass instead of washing it afterwards. Didn't they do a good job wiping their ass? That's what I just said. Wiping is not enough. We must wash. Yeah. So Gary carries, you know, his uh, spray thing, <coughs> the uh, alcohol and the uh, peroxide? peroxide and something else. Oxygen thing, whatever. So there's so so. And then he sprays there, and he puts paper towels there. So if you think there's alcohol, isopropyl rubbing alcohol and peroxide, or? three items in his spray. Well, I know I know with produce wash, it consists of water, white vinegar, and hydrogen peroxide. I know that. The you point know. is that, you know, you gotta be careful. It's a, lot of, careful. it's a lot of pathogens out there, and especially those coming back stronger than ever, resistant to antibiotics. MRSA. Like MRSA. MRSA is one of them. If the state of New Jersey can't think out of the box without stepping on the public employees' throats again, then we need a Robin Hood to steal from the rich, give to the poor, and the middle class. That sounds perfect. I, I love the Robin Hoods of, of the world. Like this gentleman. My buddy over here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Yeah, you ever notice that uh, how could things that begin with the letter X be pronounced like a Z? Like Xavier Cougat or Xanadu. That's the English language. It's crazy. It's strange. It's a hodgepodge of everything, you know, and it's sad. Now you know how confusing it is to immigrants. And yet they have China. rules. Oh, there. you mean the King's English? Yeah. Oh, there's rules. Yeah. But the people who would yell and bitch about an immigrant not learning the English language, they themselves don't know it. Don't know the English language. Because yeah. they speak hick. <laughs> you know, I mean, look, look, look how tough the English language is. Silent letters. Like, through. I, I went, th I walked through the doorway. T-H-R-O-U-G-H. Now, why the hell do you need a G-H? Now, if you threw the football, you threw the football, it sounds the same, but it's spelled differently. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, T-H-R-I-W. Huh? Dance and dance, D E N C E's and D A N C C E's. You know why do you need silent letters? Who invented mm -hmm. silent letters? Sticking H's where they don't belong or G H's, <laughs> like a bar the borough of Lodi, or New PSY. Jersey. P S Y. Borough, huh? P S Y. Psychologist. There you go. The P is silent. Pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. The P is silent. You know. And then you get somebody some. Spanish uh, person trying to learn the language, yeah. it's, it has to be very confusing for them. Very confusing. And I would say, why am I writing letters that I, I'm not pronouncing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why do, why do different words uh, sound exactly the same in pronunciation but mean different, different. things? Yeah. Like I just said, th th he threw the baseball. He walked through the doorway. Breathe in deeply. Yeah. 
feel the power of your nose. Sounds like a meditation so far. Sounds like the power of your nose. Sounds like Barbra Streisand's nose or something. If your sense of smell is firing on all cylinders, you can distinguish among a dizzying array of one trillion different odors. I mean, maybe you're talking about a German Shepherd, but not a human nose. According to a new study in the journal Science. Bad perfume, baby skin, lavender rub between your fingers, real apple pie in the oven, and apple oh, pie scented candles. That's very nice. Cinnamon, it's cinnamon, vanilla, these are very pleasant aromas. The diverse world of odor is yours for the smelling. I have this uh, organic, uh, natural glycerin soap at home with oatmeal and verbena. Well, whatever verbena is, it has the most wonderful citrus, <gasps> lemony scent to it. Mm. It's unbelievably pleasant. But, but I, I know what you mean about the apple pie spices with the cinnamon and the other things that are in there. What is it? Cardamom, nutmeg, clove. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Very good smell. Yeah. Our sense of smell is amazing. Humans are much better at smelling than we thought. Mm, yeah, I got it. Scientific research has shown humans can distinguish between 2.3 million and 7.5 million colors. It is also shown we can hear 340,000 different tones, but no one had tested how many different smells we can access. An influential study published in 1927 suggested that humans could smell about 10,000 odors, but it had never been tested. The experiment involved gathering 128 different odorant molecules including citrus, tobacco, mint, and garlic, combining them in a random mixtures of 10, 20, or 30, until they became unfamiliar and weird. The test involved three vials, two with the same mix, and one with a different one, and having the subjects identifying the different ones. As the deadline approaches for enrolling in Obamacare, younger Americans have warmed to it somewhat, but Latinos remain closely split over it. A new Pew <coughs> poll showed that 50% of Americans ages 18 through 29 now support the Affordable Care Act. Hey, if it's something you're getting and it, that you did not get before, and it's positive, you grab it, you take advantage of it. You, you know, it's not coming out of your pocket. You know, well, I mean, it's it, not perfect, Obamacare, but it's uh, you're getting a lot more coverage than before. Well, it will be coming out of some people's hives after the 31st of March. What's going to happen? They will be taxed for not enrolling. For not enrolling. Ninety-five bucks a year, I believe it is. Um, let me ask you a question: Will the will the corporations uh, be be fined? Uh, not that it, not that ninety-five bucks is going to uh, hurt a corporation, but would they be fined also? The corporations will be fined. I think it's around two thousand yeah. dollars. It will be very easy it's for them to write that off. Bucket. So just like the cost of labor is tax deductible. Mm -hmm. Latinos surveyed were evenly divided with 47% approving and 47% disapproving. The administration had originally hoped to get 7 million people to sign up for coverage in the first year. Yeah, but aren't they, um, aren't many Latinos struggling to make ends meet? Why would they say no to this coverage, to Obamacare? Why no, no. Would Oh, no. It's odd. I wonder how accurate that Fox is. Fox News put a woman on there who was complaining about her coverage went up, etc. Uh, 
when they could when they investigated further they found out that her new policy saved her money and gave her more coverage so she's a liar uh, she's a liar yes but you know what she said in her defense what I like my old policy she's paid to lie or not she just don't she like likes it. her old policy yeah the administration had originally hoped to get seven million people to sign up but lowered its expectations after the disastrous rollout last fall the healthcaregov.gov website enrollments now appear to be on track to end up somewhat more than six million at the end of this month okay gotcha so get out there and sign up well I, I did that a long time ago and um, um, too bad it's not like complete full coverage you know it's like uh, I think what I was told is that the um, horizon of New Jersey or the United Healthcare for New Jersey New Jersey is a is a like a, a type of state plan and not the typical national plan for I don't think that horizon they do not allow insurance companies to cross state line so horizon is here in New Jersey I don't know if it is in Alabama, Alabama but it's in Alabama and it does not take insurance from Louisiana so their territory they are state they're state by state yeah. just like people in Kentucky if you're if somebody normally was on Medicaid in Kentucky that they would get this uh, Coventry care I never heard of this company like in other words they can't they can't get Horizon in Kentucky it's state by state is what yeah. you're saying so this is just like New Jersey uh, New Jersey uh People who are on PAD, who get their electricity help and uh, drug help, uh, they are on Silver Script. Oh. Silver Script is a private company. The state of New Jersey pays the private company the person's requirement for, for the year. Yeah, well, my... See, it's all done with the private companies in mind. My Horizon uh, pays for prescription drugs, but then again... Um, the prescription, the generic uh, dr uh, drugs are only four dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. If I pay out of pocket, there are the generic. If there is a generic, it's four dollars. So it's four dollars, which is not a bad deal, or it's zero, which in this case I take the zero, um, unless it happens to be a drug that is not available with the generic version. Uh, you know, and some. Some some pharmacies do not have a special membership for generic. You know, like for instance, Walgreens makes you pay a fee to be able to get the generic, but Walmart does not. Uh -huh. You just go in there and you just get the generic. You know, so okay, how are we doing on time? U.S. Senator Diane Feinstein. Oh yes, I I read something about her chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee Jeez. is accusing President Obama's CIA of illegal and unconstitutional actions, violating the separation of powers by searching her committee's computers and intimidating and threatening congressional staffers. Feinstein is asking Obama to declassify and release the 6,300 page report into the Bush administration's use of torture techniques and rendition that he is withholding from the public so Americans can know what the facts are. Americans will never know what the facts are as long as that walking artificial heart Dick Cheney is still around. Okay. As a presidential candidate, Obama gave me the impression 
that he would release that information. <coughs> he promised to roll back George W. Bush's illegal policies and update the Foreign Intelligence Act to provide greater oversight and accountability to the congressional committees to prevent future threats to the rule of law. He also promised that his administration would be the most open and transparent in history. But as president, Obama has broken those promises. Rather than working to reverse George W. Bush's illegal and un-American policies, he has expanded them. Also, Obama has presided over one of the least transparent administrations in history. Last year, his administration cited national security to withhold information a record 8,496 times. A 57% increase over a year earlier and more than double his first year. Okay? Gotcha. Gotcha, man. Time for one more, or is that it? Mm. It's about that time. Wrap it up. Almost. It's after four. Oh, it is? Yes, it is. How far after four? According to that clock over there, five. Oh, how long is this reading? It's not too long. But is it interesting? Of course it is. Everything I put out on this program is interesting. Except that when you talk about the the yellow-bellied sapsucker or the whippoorwill or whippoorwill. Those are interesting. We like our animals around here. I do, but not when they're long uh, readings for the whippoorwill. Well, anyway, go ahead. No, go ahead. The whippoorwills. We haven't done whippoorwills. Well, I mean something that's not, um, um, The effective. National Security Agency has built a surveillance system capable of recording 100% of a foreign country's telephone calls and enabling the agency to rewind and review conversations as long as a month after they take place. Interesting. This ties into the previous reading. I, I like this. According to people with direct knowledge of the efforts and documents supplied by former contractor Edward Snowden, a senior manager for the program compares it to a time machine. One that can replay the voices from any call <coughs> without requiring that a person be identified in advance for surveillance. Right. The voice interception program called Mystic mm -hmm. began in 2009. Its retro tool, short for retrospective retrieval, and related projects reached full capacity against the first target nation in 2011. Planning documents two years later anticipated similar operations elsewhere. In the initial deployment, collection systems are recording every single conversation nationwide. Wow storing billions of them in a 30-day rolling buffer that clears the oldest calls as new ones arrive. Hmm. The call buffer opens a door into the past, enabling users to retrieve audio of interest that was not tasked at the time of the original call. Analysts listen to only a fraction of 1% of the calls, but the absolute numbers are high. Each month they send millions of voice clippings or cuts for processing and long-term storage. 
at the request of United States officials, the Washington Post, is withholding details that could be used to identify the country where the system is being employed or other countries where its use was envisioned. No other NSA program disclosed to date has swallowed a nation's telephone network whole. Outside experts have sometimes described that prospect as disquieting but remote with notable implications for a growing debate over the NSA's practice of bulk collection. Bulk methods capture massive data flows without the use of discriminants, as President Obama put it in January. By design, they vacuum up all the data they touch. <coughs> meaning that most of the conversations collected by Retro would be irrelevant to United States national security interests. If they're irrelevant, why have them in the first place? Correct. Thank you very much. In the view of United States officials, however, the capability is highly valuable. Caitlin Hayden, spokeswoman, for the National Security Council declined to comment on specific alleged intelligence activities. Speaking generally, she said, new or emerging threats are often hidden within the large and complex system of modern global communications. The United States must consequently collect signals intelligence in bulk in certain circumstances in order to identify these threats. What about when a terrorist just pass back and forth pieces of paper to get around such things as the NSA? Remember the old days? Remember that program with Phil, uh, Phil Philbin? I was a spy for the FBI or something. I was a. That's before my he time. He was a double agent. Yeah, back with Russia with the Soviet Union. Oh, was it was it a, a sitcom or a movie? No, it was a uh, weekly television program. It was a weekly te TV series yeah. during the Cold War. Okay. I don't remember. Some of the documents leaked by Snowden suggest that high volume eavesdropping may soon be extended to other countries if it has not been already. I'm sure uh, other countries are happy about that. The United States sticking their Pinocchio nose in their business. I see in this room untapped potential. Mm. Oh, oh. You have untapped potential. That's funny. That's like um, like a, a, a satire on uh, like uh, motivational speakers. Tony, yeah, Tony a, Robbins. I think my niece put up something last night. Uh, uh, she took a test or something, and it said that she was she was supposed to be a van or something. So I said, it, yeah, a van down by the river. A motivational speaker. Remember on Saturday Night Live with uh, Chris Farley? Motivational speaker. <laughs> you know, if you can motivate people all they all you want, I mean, you could you could psych people up. I mean, nothing's going to change if the system is not changed. If things are, are if things remain the same. And the laws are written for the elitists and the rich, and not for you. And you have no breaks in life. You can be. But you have all that enthusiasm. You You'll can you still could, be nowhere. You could be bubbling with enthusiasm. Oh yeah. You could be. Uh, you could have the enthusiasm of a hundred Tony Robbins. Uh huh. It's 
it's not going to change anything. That's right. You know, but I, I also, there's a lot of people posting things. Uh, I guess they're evangelicals. They post things like, uh, you know, just tell God what your problem is and what you want, and and he'll comply if, you know, if... Uh, not knowing, of course, that since the Garden of Eden, the vast majority of humans have been cut off from God. Okay? God does not hear their prayers. Unless he's calling you for a certain job that he wants you to do here and afterwards, you do not communicate here with him no matter how hard you try. That's what the Bible says. Cut off. That's correct. And speaking of this time of year, check out on go you can google it mega life 21 the easter lie uh the truth about easter and jesus did not die on friday check it out by the reverend dr william j eisenman uh -huh. um so uh, that wraps it up we almost had an interruption that that wraps it up for this week we haven't seen you in two weeks but better late than never Thank you for joining us for Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. We'll see you next time. Say so long to these people. So long to these people.